Okay, check the mic. I think uh, I think we're good. How's it going? Um, it's good to see you. I missed you. I've been um, I've been away since you know the last time we did this on Saturday, and um, I love being with you. It's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. Uh, and if I don't say it enough, I'll keep saying it until you're like, okay, we get it. But you got to tell people these things, right? Um, so I hope you're doing well. Um, things have been kind of crazy. I put up that video and it's caused this like, you know, insane discussion. So we're not going to talk about that tonight because the, the copyright strike thing is going on. And, and I think that uh, there's such a robust dialogue happening in so many places. It's crazy. You guys, it's crazy. So, so that's like, you know, tabled. Um, just because, yeah, I mean... I can't stand to think about it anymore <laughs> um, because, but no, it's awesome. It's awesome. Like what I wanted to do was like, you know, have people get excited and they are. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about this amazing, these amazing things that I have to share with you tonight because on Quilt Nerd, you know, you see amazing things. I mean, I see amazing things as I'm, you know, looking for stuff for you. And, uh, and then I share the most amazing things that I find with you. Uh, and tonight is no different. In fact, I have so much content that I don't know if we'll even get through everything, but we're going to try um, because it makes me happy to, to share it with you. Um, so I'm going to say hello to peeps, to my peeps. Oh, my peeps. Um, I've got a bunch of announcements and things and, and business, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best with that uh, as we go. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know what to wear. Um, I have more makeup on than I did earlier. Some of you saw me. Uh, it was not great. Uh, Susan and Robin and uh, Val is here and Myra and Rob, uh, the other Robin. Um, hey, from scratch by Jen, you made it. You made it. Oh, my God, you made it. Uh, Mother Nature and Little Bird, Court Quilts. Uh, and by the way, um, I want to let you know, yeah, there's tons of things to say. And one of the things to say, uh, thank you to all my new subscribers. Um, while the show was not on, uh, you know, many of you subscribed. And I think, I think that's wonderful. It's very encouraging to me. And, uh, and you get lots of perks. And we're going to talk about the perks and what's sort of changed to make it even perkier, really, <laughs> to be a subscriber. So, uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, if you enjoy as Fibers is here and Sewing Karen and Bridgewater in Virginia... Hey, Stephanie Cake. We've got cake. We've got several birds and several cakes and um, lots of, what else do we have? Um, nerds. We have nerds. Lots of, you know, really good screen names and many of them involve food, uh, which I approve of. Um, Kelly and Padma. Hey, Padma. Uh, and Bip and Sonia and Lillianne. And nerdy, nerdy genius. See, I said there's lots of there's lots of nerds in here. I mean, everybody's a nerd. Hey, Dee Dee, Dee Brew Crew, uh, happy Tuesday to you. And yeah, the Yo Quilt Nerds uh, Instagram account is up and running, so follow Yo Quilt Nerds on Instagram. And um, yeah, and like post your stuff, post your stuff, man. Um, thank you for subscribing with Prime, Jen. That's awesome. You subscribe for two months. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, quilt Church music. Wait a minute. Oh no. Hang on now. Hang on. I, hang on, I have to plug in the thing. I have my crisps. We have a, like a, sort of like a um, mascot for the show, and the mascot is potato chips. It just is. I all I have to have them. I need them. I need them for the show. Um, but hang on one second. Um, yeah, I gotta do. I got. Hmm, how am I gonna do that? So so I have to plug in the soundboard. Uh, just 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 hang on, hang on. So 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 wh while I do that, hey Miss Lelaney and a nun maker and Kelly and Kay, Fiendor coming home. You're on the Tuesday drive home. We are your music. We are your, you know, commute, commute um, uh, entertainment, uh, and we're thrilled to be it. Stephanie Cake, you see, a lot more cake. Uh, M. Hicks and Elizabeth and Kitty. Everybody's here tonight. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Um, new Elizabeth and uh, Kitty. Okay, uh, NDH is here. And everybody, I'm going to say hi to, to everybody too as the, as the show progresses. Um, and we, um, we go along because there's so much to do. There's so much to do. So I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to do this. And my computer isn't going to love it. And then I'm going to do this, and then we're going to have sound. Um, all right. So one of the things that happened is that we uh, we mods. We have mods. 
And by the way, if I miss you, I, I, I didn't mean to. There's a lot going on today. Um, but I will, I will, I will say hi to you. Uh, I will say hi to you and please like, you know, respond in the chat and say, and say hello if I did miss you. S girl, if I see you. Um, and, and hello to Sohani. So here we go. Hang on, hang on. Okay, yeah, okay, that's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Um, so, so one of the things that happened is we got uh, mods, which is great, it's great. Thank you to all the mods. There were a couple of you on the call um, that I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't figure out the thing. I mean, I could figure it out. I found you on Twitch and for some reason I couldn't like tick the little moderator thing for you, but if you didn't, if you didn't do the thing or if you didn't get the notification or whatever, it's coming. Uh, but to all the mods, I really, really appreciate you. Um, thank you. You know, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You're not just like, you know, the newest Estelle Witherspoon in town. You're also like, you know, the welcome party and like all this stuff. And I really like that. So appreciate it. Um, and also, so we're doing a giveaway. There's a, a hundred shows is coming up. The anniversary of a of hundred Twitch shows. It's been six months or so since I started this thing. Uh, it's my favorite thing to do. And a uh, hundred shows feels like a big deal. So at Quilt Con uh, on February 20th, which is the Sunday uh, of Quilt Con, I'm gonna draw the, oh hey, first time chat from True Rivers Quilters. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for chatting. Welcome to the, welcome to the nerd uh, group. Um, so so on uh, QuiltCon on Sunday, I'm gonna draw um, a name. You know, Streamlabs and Twitch are gonna draw the name. They'll produce a name for me and I will read it <laughs> live out loud uh, into the camera. And the prize is a $100 gift certificate to Beyond Buckskin, which is an amazing online shop. You know, we find these things like, like if you have never seen this show before, this show is called Quilt Nerd. Um, because we, we nerd out on quilts. We, we love, we love to look at quilts. We love to learn about them, uh, because we, we tend to believe, uh, and we have really good evidence, uh, that supports our belief that quilts, quilts lead you to the whole world. Uh, they're not just pretty blankets. They're these pathways to anything you want to know about any time period in history, um, any, uh, sort of a person's life, what it was like to live at this time, uh, perhaps what it was even like to be this person who made this quilt. The more we know about the maker of a quilt, the more we can learn about that person's life specifically. We can make, you know, uh, inferences about groups of people or, or time periods and things by looking at the quilts that came from that time period. Um, if you track down the, the maker of a quilt or you, you're looking for the provenance of a quilt, um, it's kind of like, it's, it's just a, sort of a detective, uh, you know, you sort of have a detective work on your hands and that can be really fun. Um, quilts are history and family and all of these things, but they're also these fascinating objects of material culture. I mean, you know, the, the things that we make with our hands are so so important, so special, because they, they really are like the yield of the human experience, right? And, and quilts, are, quilts are magic. Uh, they can cover you up and protect you. Um, but they can also be hung on the wall as art. And I just, I don't know, I think they're kind of like shapeshifters. Quilts can do so many things. They're ultimately um, just, I don't know, they're the best. They're the best things. <laughs> they're the best things and I've thought that for, for a while now. So I started the show because I wanted to uh, share all the stuff that I learn about quilts uh, right away because I learn so much as I'm lecturing or writing about quilts or doing these different things that I do. Um, and I only have so much time in a lecture to share what I have found out out there uh, in the wilds of my library or on the internet. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna share my research in real time. And so that's what I've been doing. And it's been pretty cool. So, um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, oh yeah, and, and, you like the red lipstick? I didn't know. I didn't know, I felt like it was a little severe for a Tuesday night, but you know, I am live on the internet. Um, so yes, there's, yeah, there are fox-like animals behind me. They're cats, I'm pretty sure they're cats. So, hey Cindy, Cindy and Natalie, <clears throat> everybody. So let's see here, okay. Um, I might have to do a thing with, um, with Stream Deck so I can use my, my, uh, my soundboard. It's, I mean, you know, you think you think of everything and then maybe you don't, okay. I am going to, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? Cause it's kind of throwing me off that I don't have that set. So I'm gonna pause for two seconds and do it because we need, we need it. We need it, it's part of the show. I have to, I have to be, you know, 
I have to have my little soundboard ready. I really feel naked without it, to be honest with you. So I will be right back. It, I knew it wouldn't take long and I had to do it. Okay, okay. So um, here's the deal. So we've got we've got a couple changes to to the Discord um, in terms of um, uh, access, like who has access to it, um, the subscription um, tiers for Twitch. Uh, if you're a subscriber to uh, to the show for four ninety nine a month. Um, you get access to our Discord server, and it is a lively discussion. And you can um, post your pictures of your projects and uh, chat with everybody. And uh, it's 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 pretty great. I mean, it's kind of like I barely have a handle on the Twitch thing because it's all new to me, completely new. And I'm sort of feeling my way through this whole thing. And then adding the Discord seemed really important, but um, that's a whole thing. So. It's running very well because of all of you who are using it, so I appreciate that. Um, but it's really fun, and it's a way to continue the conversation uh, when the show isn't on, uh, and and it's quite the community that we have, so it's pretty cool. So if you subscribe uh, at tier one, you get uh, an invitation to the Discord server. Um, and people who aren't uh, subscribed to the show, um, right now you have access to the Discord, but uh, there was a kind of a discussion today with a few, uh, a few folks, kind of a, Kind of a focus group, an impromptu focus group, and we were talking about everything. And and in in uh, on April first, that's gonna that's gonna change. So in sixty days, I'm gonna I'm gonna make the, the Discord uh, available to subscribers only. So you'll have to do the subscriber thing if you want access to the Discord. But it's not gonna like be cut off right now. You're gonna have you know, two months to enjoy and say, you know, this is really adding to my life. I think I'm gonna subscribe. Um, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can subscribe to one Twitch channel uh, for free uh, every month. So you should do it. You should you should subscribe to this show. That's what I think. Um, so yeah, so that's the thing. Discord on April first will be subscribers. I mean, it's subscribers only now. But if you didn't, if you're not a subscriber and you're using it now, you got two months to use it, and then and then it'll be subscribers only. Um, and there's a few other changes, but you know, I, I've been talking about the stuff uh, long enough, so let's get into the content. Um, you know, I have to say, I'm a little nervous tonight. I don't know, I mean, you can probably tell. <clears throat> it's probably very obvious because usually I'm like, I'm with my friends. <laughs> I'm never more comfortable than, than here, but yeah, I'm super nervous. And um, I don't know, there's just been a lot going on. I'm nervous because I don't know. I mean, I guess it's not nervous. I'm just sort of anxious because I don't know. There's just like all this dialogue going on, and and um, yeah. I mean, things kind of change. I think the show is changing. I mean, I, I think I think it is. I think, and we we've talked about this before. By the way, talking about this is how the show will be better. <laughs> so I have to talk about it. Um, you know, the show the show is going to change because you know the the viewership changes and it grows. Uh, hopefully, um, if it doesn't ever grow, I'll be fine because I like hanging out with you. Hey, it's uh, Adisto Marge. How's it going, Adisto? I'm so glad you're here. First time, first time. So excited. Uh, yeah, you came in. You came on a good night because it's very um, it's very uh, it's an unusual show, and things that are unusual are usually pretty interesting. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could think we could tease that out and see if that's really true. But you know, something that's sort of unique, right? You want to look at, and this is a unique show on its own. But then tonight, you know, there's a vibe. There's a vibe because I don't know. There's sort of a crackle of energy in the air, and I feel it, and uh, and it's really interesting. So, uh, Court Quilts, hello, by the way, Jill Alex. So, is SJ 
SJ Pepper is here. Well, everybody. SJ, SJ Pepper. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't do the show without the thing. I mean, are you kidding? We have to have it. We have to. Have, I can't wait to press all of the buttons. Um, so, so yeah. So it's so it's been kind of a, a crazy few days. And uh, and hey, PJ. And then now that I've talked about it, I'm like completely better. You know, it's like why fake it? Why be like everything's fine while I'm like, eh, you know, forgetting the soundboard and everything? Because I don't know. If I have one superpower, it's probably that I'm. You know. Oh, hello. Hey, Megan. Megan G J B. Megan, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, and uh, and yeah, so so now I've said it. <clears throat> now I've said it, and uh, and my heart is on my sleeve, uh, where it usually is, and it's uh, it's just it's right there, where it should be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's great. That's really cool. Um, so we always start the show with um, the quilt behind me. I have a different quilt behind me every time, and. Uh, and this is uh, this is a quilt that like so so one thing I didn't say about the show is that I don't it's not a presentation I don't have like uh, I don't have a lecture for you I haven't like prepared notes well I have prepared notes but I didn't write them um, I bring all this content to you I bring these wonderful things and I learn along along with you I mean I want to be excited with you it's part of the appeal of doing the show you know um, hey Robin's Nest did I say hi? <laughs> SJ, I won't press the Dusty Springfield button, I promise. Hey, Kenny. Um, so, because I don't, you know, I don't want to, like, rehearse this. First of all, I don't, I, I don't have, there's not enough time in a day to make content and get it all, like, perfect. But, um, but so I have these buckets and I bring you these things. And, and, and this, and the quote behind me, let's, uh, let's take a look at the full thing. Um, let me get small. Help, oh, help, I'm small. Um, this is, this is the full... The full quilt. Actually, I'm going to go to this view here. Um, this is is a quilt that I found long ago, and I don't know where. I don't know where. I mean, I have the files that I have. They are they are vast uh, and deep. They are meant. They're they're. I mean, they are numerous, and they are uh, they are deep. And I have this folder called Mary's Big Folder of Fascination. And uh, it's, it's, it's the folder with the subfolders that holds like a zillion little things, you know, little bits. Like I have folders for, you know, um, like, like, uh, like uh, who we're going to look at tonight, Aiko Okano. I have a folder for her and, you know, she's got a lot of stuff in her folder. But every once in a while, actually, you know, f fairly frequently, I'll come across something uh, that uh, is kind of a, a one-off, a sort of random, you know. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this thing? And the person who made the quilt uh, or did the thing, I can't find much more about that person or whatever, but it's too good. It's too good to, to let go of. So I put it in Mary's big folder of fascination and you know, then we can take a look at it. Um, so, so this is one of those things. I know who made it. The person who made it is Susan Harlan. And I, the file name, if you see, the file name is uh, Cat Quilt. <laughs> but, but I don't think that's what it's called. But there, I mean, look, there's so, I see so much stuff. I see so much stuff. I look at this stuff all day. See so much stuff and I do my best to, you know, keep track of it all. But I don't know where I found this. And believe me, I, if you, if you search Susan Harlan, and I'll, and I'll tell you what I know about her, because she does have a website and she is a person that we know. So I could find out, right, what this quilt is, what its name is, what year it was made. But you see, that would be preparation. <sighs> That's not what we do around here, right? So, um, so I know that it's Susan Harlan, and I know that it's um, that it's cats. I mean, I guess it could be foxes. Someone said it might be a fox. I think it's cats. Um, but it came across the transom at some point, and it's made by Susan Harlan. And you know, in terms of the the date on it, you know, we can only speculate. But I would say, you know, seventies, eighties. In there I would say something in there um, and the reason hey court quilts thank you for that I'm so glad you I'm so glad you came I'm so glad you came thank you for coming really thank you for coming um, Myra did I say hi to you I think silver snow silver snow foxy I think we have more foxes in here too don't we anyway um, thanks for coming so 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 this quilt, you know because I don't have a year on it um, 
And because, you know, it's, it's kind of this mystery thing. It's like, where did it come from? And, and by the way, you know, you can do an image search on Google. You can drop, you know, thing, the images into your Google search and it, can, it does its best to find the image. But a quilt like this, it doesn't work very well because you have all kinds of, I mean, it's, there's a lot going on. Google's like, excuse me, <laughs> you know, I can do, I'm gonna do my best, but it, it's like a crazy quilt. It's a patchwork quilt. It's, it's, it's tough for Google to, to zero in on this exact thing, at least right now, uh, so far. Um, the transom, thank you. Thank you, SJ. I know, that's what I, that's what I, yes, thank you. Transom. Um, SJ, you have to do some. You have to do something uh, sassy. So, like you have to do something um, frisky, so I can play your your sound your sound cue. I mean, I don't think you're gonna have a problem with it. I think you're gonna come up with something. Uh, no pressure. So um, anyway, so 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 what I thought we would do is as we look at this, and I'll tell you about Susan Harlan is um, talk a little bit about construction because I look at a quilt like this, and I, I mean. <laughs> We've got satin, right, and vel velveteen, velvet felt. I'm not sure. Let's go really close in. Another reason I, I had to get this quilt into the oh hello hello Mary hello your <clears throat> um your your bosom <laughs> hello bosom. Um, another reason I really wanted to keep this quilt around and use it as an intro quilt is because the image is really good. It's a really high res image. Um, hey, all right. Ko Kozo, Kozo, Kozak 4, listen, Kozo, I, only, I like calling you Kozo, I hope that's okay. Kozo, um, found you on YouTube this weekend, binge watched Quilt Nerd, and came to Twitch to watch here too, love all, the things hand love all things handmade. Kozo, I'm so glad you're here, you're gonna get welcome baskets in the chat, that's what we do, hey nose to quilts. Um, we're so glad you're here, that's awesome, I love, I'm so, well you are a nerd, clearly, you are a quilt nerd, and you are in the right place, so uh, you're gonna love it here, you're gonna really love it here. We can't get enough. Um, and thank you, Jana, for subscribing. That's awesome. I appreciate you. That's great. So, uh, so I really like a good high res picture. There's nothing like it when you're a quilt nerd because you really want to go in and look at, you know, um, the construction. Uh, and it does, Stephanie Cake, it does look like that shiny 70s and 80s satin. But this, this purple looks like felt. I mean, I mean, felted wool, or but it almost looks like craft felt or something. While you are examining these different parts, and I'm gonna come over here. I mean, she also has a satin stitch here, like on the cat, right? On all of the cats, which is interesting. Um, let me just tell you what I know about Ms. Harlan, La Harlan. Um, Susan Harlan Fine Art, uh, dot fineartstudioonline.com. Um, Susan Harlan, here's about her, about Susan. Upon returning to her home in Middle Tennessee, hold on, my lips are so dry, it's like, it's a big problem. Upon returning to her home in Middle Tennessee, Susan Harlan likewise returned to painting. Returned to painting. For years, she made large scale quilts on a commission basis for corporations and individuals. After seeing the beauty of her childhood hills with new eyes, awesome, she took up her brush and never looked back. Susan's landscapes are very personal statements. Her sense of awe and respect for Tennessee's dazzling landscape is evident in her portraits of the unspoiled, verdant countryside. So, you know, another reason why this is pretty awesome um, is that, Cindy D, did I say hi to you? I don't know, I'm gonna keep saying hi to people that I don't remember if I said hi to. Um, the, the, another reason why this is such a great quilt to, you know, to share, even though there's missing information, is that I think it's so interesting that she, that Susan Harlan was a quilt person and switched to painting because a lot of times, and I'm sure there's lots of people like that, you know, of course, but a lot of times the people that we talk about on the show are, you know, they were painters or weavers or they were, you know, or they weren't making art at all. But a lot of people that we talk about um, moved to quilts after becoming disillusioned or bored with another medium that they were working in. And so um, I think it's so interesting that she's like, nope, I'm sick of these quilts. Quilts are for the birds. I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint. 
and so and so she is, and she has been ever since. So if you go to her her website, um, and you can just if you just uh, actually Google Susan Harlan quilts you're going to find her. Um, but you won't find any other quilts unless you, you know, you, you're the nerds. You know of what you speak. You know how to Google. Um, so if you can find more of her quilts, I'd love to know. Um, because this is fantastic. I love it. And her paintings are really beautiful. You know, because there's so much content tonight that is quilt, you know, specific, um, I didn't pull pictures of her paintings to show you. But but she's extremely talented, of course. Sewing Report. Sewing Report, hi. Toonsis was one of the better SNL sketches. I think... That we have to play that sound because Toonsis was a driving cat. And obviously that's a police horn. horn. Um, did Toonsis get pulled over a lot or was it just or was it just about hijinks? I don't remember. But I really love Toonsis. Toonsis. What about Jorts the driving cat? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, her paintings are really beautiful, like landscape stuff and, and it's it's good. Um, quilts are for the cats, yes, quilts are for the cats. She was at the Racine Art Museum in 2021. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Stephanie says, I love how this quote clearly shows cats doing crap cats do. <laughs> She's clearly got a style that communicates a lot with limited detail. Totally. I mean, the, the little shapes of, yeah, look at these cats doing what cats do. Poking their little head up, you know, over here, over the table. Um, yeah, she, I mean, she has such a grasp of you know, she's so talented because these cats are, yeah, simple shapes, right? But they, they're extremely evocative. Love it. He was always on the run. Toonsis was always on the run. <laughs> oh. um, all right. So that's our, so that's our thing. Susan Harlan. And uh, it's so cool to see her because her picture, she's, you know, a woman of a certain age. So she's been making a living as an artist her entire life, which is amazing. Um, oh, lovely. Kenny, this is great. Quote, if you want to be a psychological novelist and write about human beings, the best thing you can do is to keep a pair of cats. Aldous Huxley. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's very nerdy. If, we, if someone says something, something extremely nerdy on the show, we play the graduation cat song. That was, that was nerdy. I mean, quoting Aldous Huxley, approved. Approved. Okay, so 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 first up on this on this uh, adventure, you know, the last time we were together, we watched. Um, I mean, we looked at this uh, this wonderful book, Women of Taste. You know, uh, quilts being made um, in collaboration with chefs, with female chefs, and and uh, entrepreneurs in the food world. Um, and and I uh, and I had something else queued up because. Um, because I love this person's work and there's so much food in her work, but I, I got tired. I mean, I was so excited. A lot of you were there. My friend, Jonathan, if you're out there, you were there. And I was like, I wonder if Jonathan liked that show. And then you emailed me to say that you liked the show. So I was glad, but I got, um, I got kind of, I was kind of wiped out. And, uh, and so I didn't do the last portion and I didn't even tell you because I didn't want to disappoint you. But I have it ready, and I, I just love this person's work. So this person's name is uh, Aiko Okano. And I first saw her stuff at the International Quilt Museum because much of her work is at the International Quilt Museum. And she was um, she had her own show at the IQM some years back. Uh, and... <laughs> and it's it's like I don't know I mean you just you're in love you look at these quilts and it's like if you don't love them like you you are you're a ghost you know a sad one <laughs> you're I mean you know it's pretty it's pretty hard not to just sort of feel better when you look at her stuff there's a whimsy to it obviously um, but great detail in her very specific uh, style and and there and there's just so much food she's she's really into putting food into her work. So I've got some quilts to show you from her. It's not a ton, but I couldn't miss her. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't miss her. Are the details embroidered? Yes, some of them are. And well, yeah, I'll show you some close-ups too of a few like smaller works that she has, and you'll be able to see things a little bit um, more clearly. Um, Aiko Okano has been a leading quilt artist in Japan since the 1980s. Um, after learning patchwork, 
from pre- preeminent quilt maker Chuck Nohara. She founded the quilt school, Basket, where she currently teaches regularly. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's a quilt school? A quilt... There's a quilt school in Japan called Basket? I mean, that's very cool. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. A quilt school? Do we have quilt schools? I mean, that sounds ridiculous that I would need to ask that question, but think about it. We have quilt workshops and we have quilt classes. There are quilt shops, you know, but quilt school? I like this idea and I love that it's called Basket. Approved. Very cool. Very cool. So, oh, wait, let me go back. So she founded the Quilt School Basket, where she currently teaches regularly. In 1988, she received the Grand Prix Award from the magazine Watashi no Heya in their 100th is- issue special. In 1994, she was selected for the 20 Japanese quilts feature in the Asahi newspaper. And in 1999, she was featured in a 30-minute NHK program, Oshare Kobo. Hang on one second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to do something. I want to do something really quick. Okay, I have a little bit about this quilt. Time for Supper. It's called Time for Supper. And it was made in 2005. Um, And Time for Supper features some of Okano's favorite Japanese dishes, including the center block's simmered red snapper and sweetened soy sauce. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Um, On a yellow and white checkered background, you may recognize maki, a form of sushi in which rice and other ingredients are shaped into a roll wrapped with seaweed and cut into slices. Yes, the maki is down here. Um, What else? Egg, sashimi. I mean, I don't know if I know my Japanese dishes well enough to, to, no, I don't know my Japanese dishes well enough to point out like, and here is this and here is that, but some of you may know. Um, may know more. That's a bento box, right? This little guy down here. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. It's really great. Um, and this quilt, this next one, sorry, is called Delicious Quilt. <laughs> so great. It's called, oh yeah, Delicious Quilt, Salsa, etc. Delicious Quilt, Salsa, etc. It was also made in 2005. Um, Moki was bottom left. Yeah, yeah, Maki Combo. Maki Combo. It's good. That's good. Um, this one, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't know. We've, if you have red and white polka dots in a quilt, I'm probably going to stop and enjoy what you've done. Um, let's see what she says. So, so up here, it looks like a, yeah, it's a recipe, right? 140 grams or five ounces dry weight pasta shells. Um, such and such tender young broad beans, lightly boiled. 10 110 kilograms of red kidney beans canned. Interesting. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Isn't this great? Look at that. Wow, help, help, I'm in a salad. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's really, the picture is not as high res as I want it to be, but we'll see, we'll see another, uh, another image here in just a minute that has some more uh, detail, I think. Um, But there's beading on it, right? I know. Um, beating on it and embellishment. Uh, yeah, I agree, Miss Eleni. A family recipe on a quilt is such a cool idea. I agree. And, and also what I tend to point out and, and what we're going to do uh, tonight is look at this and then we're going to look at this really wonderful community-based uh, art project that this man has been doing for, I think, 20 years or something with a quilt. And then we're going to look at quilts. I've called, I've called this chapter, there's not really chapters, but I've called the, this, the third thing, quilts that make me happy. And, uh, and many of them are kind of weird. Not all of them, but many of them are pretty weird. Um, and, and if you're new around here, you know, we have a saying. <laughs> um, keep quilts weird, you know. Weird quilts are good. And, and that, you know, the best quilts are... There's a lot of great quilts, and a lot of great quilts aren't perfect. They're, you know... The quilts that have, you know, sold them, uh, show the maker's hand, their imperfections, their humanness, you know. Um, and so this quilt, you know, the way the writing is, of course she's obviously very talented, you know. SJ says this quilt has beading and beans. Barely. <laughs> Barely. You get the siren. You get the siren. But you do. You do. Um, but anyway, so, so like the way the writing is, you know. I think, I think a lot of times, and you know, 
And we talk about it because it, I think it's really important. I mean, we've, we've gotten to a point in the quilt world where things are super commercialized. You know, we have tools for absolutely every technique that you want to do. There's a special tool for it. There's a book about it. There's a pattern for it and all this stuff. Uh, a template or, you know, some kind of thing you can you can get online. And that's totally okay. But I, I the quilts that we look at on this show a lot of times are, um, you know, they're not those quilts. The, the quilts that... that I find really interesting and the quilts that we all find really fascinating and inspiring, truly inspiring to make quilts of our own the way we want to make them. They're quilts like this, you know, broccoli, broccoli is, you know, it's traveling down a little bit, you know, it's not on a straight line. And like I said, simple is complicated. You know, this person is extremely talented. She's an artist and everything is very intentional. She's not just like, I'm going to write broccoli and I don't care how it looks. It's fine. She has a plan, you know, everybody has a plan. However, you know, it just doesn't have to be straight. It doesn't have to be a straight line. It doesn't have to be um, symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfectly quilted um, to be really wonderful. And a lot of times the quilts that are not perfectly quilted are, yeah, they're our favorite ones. So so if, I, if, I've, got a, um, if I've got a mission in life, it's like, you know, keep quilts weird and and keep them around. <laughs> okay, so yeah, a couple more here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So that's her. So I think, so does anyone read Japanese? I would not be surprised if someone knows Japanese here. Um, but, oh wait, you're talking about BTS. Hold on. Okay, a while back, Sewing Report says, I created a paper piecing pattern to make a BTS logo quilt block. You could just make a ton of them. So BTS, South Korean, right? They're South Korean. I can't believe I have to ask that, but I do. But they, no, I know that. They're a boys, they're a boys group. They're, they're boys, <laughs> they're a boys uh, singing group. They sing and dance and they're extremely entertaining. And when I play Beat Saber, I sometimes I play the BTS uh, track. Beat Saber is a VR game. So BTS and Beat Saber, it's, it's like very Twitch, what we're talking about right now. It's extremely Twitch um, appropriate. So, um, yeah. Oh, wow. An Eye of Sauron. Kenny says, I've thought about making an Eye of Sauron quilt using Bargello. Eye of Sauron is a um, Lord of the Rings reference. BTS to Lord of the Rings. This is what you get in Quilt Nerd. This is what you get. Uh, okay. Ooh, JSOC4 says, Omo shir Shiroi is the first word and means interesting. So great. Gah, oh, you win. <laughs> You win. I mean, Aldous Huxley's pretty good. Kenny, it's a close second, but we do have someone who can read Japanese, so <laughs> it's pretty good. You might be like, that's that's all right. That's good. Um, so, and the second word is in is in uh, katakana, the alphabet for foreign words. Interesting. Oh, okay. Very very interesting. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Chris Mess. I do VR. Yes, I do. I play Beat Saber. I'm very good at it. I, ha I am. I'm very good. I can play um, Expert Plus and complete many. I, I play Expert Plus. I warm up with Expert Level and then I really challenge myself with Expert Plus. I'm really good. I am. I'm re you know what that I learned during the first year of the pandemic? All I did was play Beat Saber. I was in the best shape of my life. Seriously. I did push-ups and I played Beat Saber and I mean my arms. <laughs> I was like, well, I'll play Beat Saber for the rest of my life. But then, you know, you do get tired of things. Um, and now Stephanie Cake has um, quoted Winona Ryder from Heather's. Wait, is that? No, no, from, from uh, Beetlejuice. Okay, okay. What's happening? It's a crack up. Um, so, so this is, this is Aiko Okano. Good Lord, what's happening? What's going on? Get, get the show back, back on the rails. Okay, so I think, I think this is, this is when, you know, it said the magazine, this magazine, um, Watashi? I mean, I don't know. But she was given this award, the Grand Prix Award for magazine Watashi no Heya, in their 100th issue special, and it was in 1988. And this looks like maybe it's 1988. I mean, she's wearing suspender, you know, black cool suspenders with a lot of pins. Um, hey, Ivy Kadivy, how's it going? How's it going? I'm glad you're here. So I think this might be might be that magazine. Okay. So do you remember the um, when we looked at the the quilts? We looked at the quilts from from um, 
I mean, we, we did look at the Abstract Design in American Quilts exhibit, I think, right? At the, at the International Quilt Museum. Of course we did. We must have. The Jonathan Holstein Quilts. <clears throat> uh, we looked at some of the exhibit that was up for the 50th anniversary of that show. Anyway, you know, one of the sort of auxiliary exhibits to the big 50th anniversary um, uh, show, the exhibit of, of the quilts from that Abstract Design in American Quilts exhibit at the Whitney Museum in 1971, um, <clears throat> one of the auxiliary exhibits was uh, quilts that were inspired by quilts in the show. Uh, uh, many from Japan, <clears throat> and then some other quilts, art quilts that had been inspired by there was one of these quilts that we looked at, and I remember very well, clearly, <clears throat> I remember clearly that we loved it. We loved it so much. This was the quilt that inspired it, and this is the quilt. Well, that's Aiko Okano. And until I was looking at the food stuff, I forgot. I mean, I didn't realize. I didn't realize that this is her. So, I mean, that's so cool, you know? Isn't that great? This was, I mean, and it's a kimono, so, yeah. But she's, I mean, she's Japanese, so the kimono thing is, it means something a little bit different. You know, I, I mean, I don't know when she made this. Oh, I don't know if I have. Yeah, 2020. 2020, it's called It's a Beautiful Day. So she made it, you know, very recently um, for, for that 50th anniversary show. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still hoping really sincerely that some of you, one of you, <laughs> maybe not many of you, but one of you will research and write a paper on Kimonos, the proliferation of quilt kimonos in the 1980s. But here we have another one. So you could talk to Aigo Okano about this. It's so great. Um, Holmes says that her phone, her phone says that the white text on that uh, magazine uh, it translates to funny applique. Funny applique. That's the kind of applique I make. It's, it's funny. It's funny looking. It's stunning. Isn't it wonderful? It's so good. It's so great. I love red and white. I love red and white. And I mean, this quilt too, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just like bouncing the pictures. This quilt is just iconic, obviously. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, there's, it doesn't get better than this, you know? It doesn't get better than this. American quilts, you know, there's classics and then there's like classic classics and this is one of them. And then for Aiko Okano to do this is like, it's awesome. So I thought that'd be really satisfying to show you all because, you know, we know this. We know this work. We know this work. We're getting more nerdy all the time. Um, okay, a few more. Um, though this is a picture from the exhibit uh, at the IQM at the International Quilt Museum. You know, I had to show you for a couple reasons. One, I love the quilt on the left. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit. Kind of grainy, but this I love these purple circles um, and this this turquoise swoosh. Um, and, and you can see, I mean, getting closer actually might not be that helpful um, because, because when you look at the construction of this, I don't know about you, but it's 90 degree triangles, right? I mean, it's all, it's like a thousand pyramid in construction, don't you think? And now look at it and, and tell me. Um, come on. Oh, Padma says, is there a square on the bingo board kimono quilt? Someone's keeping track of this, aren't they? Because like we really will get a bingo board. Oh, that's a really good idea for merch or for a perk. I think the bingo boards should be perks, like a, like a perk. Like if you subscribe at tier two, you get a bingo board. I think that should be, oh, that would be so much fun. I want to give bingo boards. I don't want you to just have bingo boards. I mean, I do, but I want to. I think that would be great. I would think that would be great. Make quilt nerd bingo boards for, for not for merch, for subs. I mean, I could have them printed up and everything. My mom would love to make them. By the way, you know what? I know why I was nervous at the beginning. I didn't do this. I didn't show you all my, my quilt nerd content plan. I have to show it. It's like my homework. It's like, I did my homework. <laughs> I promise. So, so I just wrote that down in my notes. Look at this. Make Quilt Nerd Bingo Boards for Subs. And I wrote it so that I can read it later. Oh, I think it'd be great. What kind of, and then you, and then I can pick out like the little, you know, the little bingo dots. A quilt kimono, I, <laughs> would I be opposed to a quilt kimono? Hell no, I mean, if you, 
I mean, that's, that's so interesting, actually, a sewing report, because, I mean, look at this, look at this garment. Well, you know what, you know what we have to do? We have to do a show on the kimonos. I mean, I have to, look, now this is my second note. Kimono show. I mean, these kimonos, sewing report. Just wait, I mean, just, just buckle up. Because I don't know if you know how many kimonos, like art quilts, art quilts that were in the shape of kimonos or that were actually kimonos. I don't know if you know how many there were out there for at, 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 a, at a certain time. And I don't know if people were wearing them or not. We gotta find out, but it's fascinating. I, people were going kimono crazy. In fact, they used to say, we've gone kimono crazy and crazy was spelled with a K. Kimono crazy. Um, you remember this one, okay, okay. Good, good, good. So, so, so what do you think? I mean, I think all of these on um, the quilt on the left, they're all um, pieced 90 degree triangles, inverted, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. I think it's pretty wonderful. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just gorgeous. Pretty Susie, did I say hi to you? I don't know, but hello, I'm glad you're here. In the 90s, well, in the 90s, it might have been the 90s, Steph. No, it was the 80s, it was the 80s and the 90s. When I think about kimonos, I think about um, Via Von Porcella in particular, um, and maybe Nancy Crow was getting on the kimono train. Um, one little thing about this, this is a close up from somebody's blog who was going to a show. Um, this is, oh yeah, this was from the Tokyo International Quilt Festival in 2020. And I loved it because, look at this, there's paper clips on it. And we love office supplies. If you love office supplies, you'll probably love making quilts. Give it a chance, give it a chance. If you, if you get a stapler and you're like, mm, and then you get to staple something and you're like, yes. And if you have tabs, if you have tabs and you, like, look, look, there's a tab on my monitor. If you have a tab on your monitor and you're not making quilts, I, I don't know. Um, so this is called, Qui let's see, hmm, actually, I don't know. Is this, oh yeah, it's called I Wanna Buy Shoes. It's called I Wanna Buy Shoes. Um, and this is from a, a blog, opquilt.com, and the username was Queenie Patch. And she says, from the very start, Ms. so she was at the show at Tokyo and, and wrote this about this, this quilt. From the very start, Ms. Okano added buttons to her quilts uh, of traditional patterns, log cabins, strippy quilts, Dresden plates, etc. Then she began to make her own very unique picture and text quilts. Many of them have recipes and illustrations of the ingredients. Her embroidery is done mainly in stem stitch. Interesting and it's usually slightly off the mark. All these things make it easy to pick out an Okano quilt in the crowd. I see that in I Wanna Buy Shoes, she has also added paper clips, so. So she wins everything, okay? <laughs> Kenny, when I see tabs on clearance, I usually buy all I can get. If you ever see tabs on clearance, you know who to talk to. Okay, so then, so the other reason I showed you that picture from the exhibit is I just have maybe five of these last last things, uh, last images. But though, but in the foreground, <clears throat> there was, you see this table and, and these little, um, uh, set, you know, setting, setting places. Well, those are little mini quilts set up. You know, it's a little bit like Judy Chicago's dinner party, which we, we've never talked about the dinner party, but we will someday. A little bit like that, but also very different from Judy Chicago's famous dinner party art installation. But those little mini quilts, I have just a few pictures of them here because they're charming and wonderful, and you can see a little bit more closely her construction. So obviously, this is an avocado. The yellow yarn, I don't know, it's just so, it, like the gingham that she uses, the big stitch, the squiggly lines, I mean, to say it's childlike, I don't even know if I really like that word, but it's, it seems, um, I don't know, innocent is a little weird too. I don't know. I don't know, it seems like she's having fun doing it. Like she's really having fun doing it. And I know that there are times when we're making something that we're having fun with, uh, you know, it, it becomes not fun. But it seems, it seems that she likes doing this because, you know, this is not a quilt of a person who's, you know, a jerk. <laughs> just don't see her as a jerk. I'm not getting jerk from from her. Um, yeah, it's just great. And and of course, you know, it's Ill illustrative. 
is it illustrative? Is that the word I want? That I, because I I'm thinking that it means uh, or that it suggests to me a drawing, you know, a sketch like a like a children's book or something. You might see this kind of thing. Whimsical, exactly, exactly, whimsical. Um, mom, my mom's in the chat. My mom's here, everybody. Pure Jill Alex. Jill Alex, I like that. Pure. Yeah, innocent is like I don't know. Innocent seems like not, like, like that could be, you could infer that someone is sort of naive, right? Yeah, like naive and not, not so smart, but sort of there's a purity to it. I like that very much. I think purity is better. I think purity is better. Good job. Good job. Joel, thank you. Thank you. Um, how big is that? This is a very good question. Small quilt. It is small. I don't have the... Do I? I don't know. I don't have the measurements on it. I can find it. I can find it easy enough. But you know what? Instead of instead of doing that, I'll just show you this again. So that those are cups. Those are normal sized cups, like drinking cups down there. So you know, I don't know, like ten by ten, something like that. Is that would that be about right? Yeah, probably. They're not too big. And here's another one. Oh wait, oh here's another one. Um, this is a radish. I remember. This is a radish. Mom, how are you? Sewing report. I love how the creator gives it a kind of laid back and not so serious vibe. Thousand percent. Totally. It's like you can enjoy this quilt. It's it's easy for you to enjoy this. It is. I will make it easy. Uh, it does look delicious. Well, you know what? When I saw this one, <laughs> I thought it was maybe a uh, creme brulee or some kind of panna cotta. And then I was I read and it's a radish and I didn't like it as much. Okay. Um, and then white asparagus. Isn't that great? So good. There's something about her, her stitch lines, her embroidery that really makes it look like a char, like charcoal or something. Don't you think? It's, it's just magnificent. It's wonderful. So, um, so she is good. We like Aiko Okano very much. And you can see why, I mean, I wanted to have, have her in the food show, but you know, sometimes you gotta bump the you gotta bump the content, um, and sometimes I do that and I save things for later because I'm you know I gotta yeah that's the last one because I you know I I want to save things for later and I think I'm gonna do it at the next show but then I don't feel it I gotta feel it I gotta feel the content. Um, my mom says Mark, my stepfather, uh, Mark and I are playing a round of gin rummy post dinner. I made a great pasta. Speaking of food, mom, what kind of pasta did you make? Um, I had. Uh, dumplings. I had like potstickers because Eric knew that I needed my favorite food, which is potstickers. Almost. Pizza is my favorite food. Okay. Okay. Whatever, whatever six-year-old, whatever six-year-olds eat, that's my favorite food. I'm sorry to say it. Okay. So this is, this is crazy. So I, uh, I was in my big folder of fascination and, um, and looking around, uh, at these various one-off things and, um, and I, I saw this picture and I was like, oh yeah, that thing. And I, and, and it's, it's a picture from a play. And you know, from time to time we find these, these plays or these movies, you know, there was that movie from the 1960s called uh, Crazy Quilt that was the worst. It was just terrible and chauvinistic and sort of painful and you know, I, I got upset and then I was like, I'm sorry, I got upset. And then I was like, I'm not sorry, I got upset. Um, and then, you know, the quilters, the musical. Oh, sorry. I think I just moved the chat. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, then we looked at quilters, the musical. And, and so far we have not found like a dramatic, <laughs> dramatic uh, uh, production uh, of the cinematic or theatrical variety that we've really just gone all in for. We're all open. I know that we're all open to it. Um, but so far, not so much. This is a picture from a play called Death Quilt. Yeah, Death Quilt. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Lillian says, there's a great adaptation of Alice Walker's Everyday Use available on YouTube. Quilts are a huge part of the story, or part of the plot. Totally, I actually read Everyday Use on the show many moons ago um, because I wanted to hang out on Sunday, but. I just didn't have the energy to set up my sewing stuff. So I just read some stuff. It was nice. Um, it's a great story. Uh, and that's really cool. That's good to know on YouTube that there's a, a, a movie version of everyday use. That's great. Thank you for the tip. So Death Quilt. Yeah, it's called Death Quilt. 
So here's what it's about. Okay, it's written by a woman named Leslie Harold Dillon. I only have two pictures of this, but I have to show them to you because there's a play called Death Quilt, and also this picture rules. <laughs> it's so great. Um, I just love the time period. I mean, it's obviously the 80s, and there's this great, it's a great quilt, and this girl's wearing tennis shoes and white tennis shoes and black socks, rolled. Uh, and the other woman has amazing jewelry on, and anyway, it's fantastic. But I only have two pictures of it, and, and then I have to show you because it led me to the next thing, which is really fantastic. Um, there's a bandage on the shin. I saw that as well. Is it a part of the play? Or is it because she fell off her skateboard? We don't know. We'll have to read the play. So, okay, two acts. It's a drama in two acts. Three women, three men. Set simultaneously in a present-day Manhattan country chic store and a, and a Western stagecoach changing station of the late 1800s. So country chic store, obviously this is where we are in this picture, the modern day country chic store. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hey, Molly. Um, someone said she had a serious rotary cutter accident. Yes, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, it's the 80s. Mom, when did when did people... Well, you're not the only person who would know, but when did you have a rotary cutter? Actually, I do want to know. Marianne Fons, when did you have your first rotary cutter? What year? Put down that hand, gin rummy, and let us know. I must know. So, okay, so so this play takes place in two places. They're, they're messing with time here. It's a country chic store and then a Western stagecoach changing station in the late 1800s. Okay, the play depicts three main characters, a hand model. This is getting very good. You know I didn't read this description before. I just queued it up, so it's all new to me. Three main characters, a hand model, a rancher, a half Sioux Indian woman. I think this is the young lady in front of us here. Uh, all of whom contend across time with the power of longing and the fear of love. Oh! I still need the dun dun dun. I still need that. What am I going to use? Well, nothing now. I mean, we'll just have to press on and maybe we have an opportunity to do something else. On a morning in Manhattan, Sue Ann, owner of Sweet Country, God, I love this play, begins a harried day by having firehouse paint spilled on her by O'Brien cutting her leg. <laughs> It's not weird. We saw the bandage, but I had to do something. Okay. The outlander of quilting. Exactly. So she, she has her leg cut. And, and she discovers a mysterious woman named Fleeta in her shop as she pulls from a box an antique quilt. Okay. Those things are connected. It's not clear how. On a morning in Rogue River, Will waits for his wife, an Indian woman, Fleeta who has not returned from her vision quest, confronts Dolly, a boy who's been stabbed. Who does? Oh, Will. Will confronts Dolly, a boy who's been stabbed. By the way, this is the other picture I have, okay? I don't know if it's Will, I don't know. Uh, he confronts Dolly, a boy who's been stabbed, as his friend Cora begins to sew a quilt made from the dresses of his dead wife. Through the agency of the death quilt, Sounds kind of good. The, uh, uh, these six characters contend across time as they grapple with mystery, murder, love, and identity. End of description. And then there's some reviews. Santa Fe Reporter says, this is a wonderful fresh play with themes we long to hear uh, of men and women, women and women, the West, actually the women's West. <laughs> it tests our imagination. Well, that could be, that could be... That's kind of a damning with faint praise to some extent. It tests our imagination. You know, this play, it challenged my imagination. <laughs> it could be it could be a good thing. It could be him being, or her, being very uh, diplomatic, a very, very good, a very good person to have you, have to review your play if your play is challenging. <laughs> it challenges your imagination. Anyway, so, so I'm like, yeah, the death quote, what's this about? I actually think it sounds Pretty interesting. I would totally read it. I would really like to read it. Um, and uh, by the way, I wanted to tell you uh, up at the top of the show too that um, I think I mentioned it last time. I got an Abe Books affiliate code, or it's like a link. 
So a lot's been going on, so I haven't done this thing yet, but I'll have a, an affiliate link that, um, like maybe there'll be a button on my Twitch channel that you can, if you ever wanna buy a copy of the Death Quilt perhaps, and Abe Books has a copy, you can just click on my affiliate link and it'll take you to Abe Books and then you know, I get like five cents or something, which is great. Um, and also I think the mods, can like periodically like drop the link in the in the chat. That can be like a command, you know? Or like when we talk about a book and it's like, hey, this book is available on Abe Books. Somebody can be like, Abe Books, link, mod, job, accomplished. So I'm looking for stuff about the death quilt. I'm like, I wanna know more. I'd love to have some video about this. Um, <laughs> Christmas, I can't wait for death quilt too. The seam ripper cometh. Oh my God. Jill the seam ripper. Like Jack the Ripper, but Jill the Seam Ripper. It, there is actually something to that. I mean, seriously, good job, Christmas. Uh, because, I mean, a Seam Ripper is, is a pretty, it's, that's, that's a weapon. I mean, it's, it's, it can be real. I mean, it's really sharp. It's not super sharp, but oh, a rotary cutter. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, Eric loves scary movies. He loves them and he watches them all the time. And I hate them. I cannot, I like monster movies. Monster movies are okay, but demons, evil spirits, psycho killers, like what is, I cannot, it's horrible. I get so afraid. I get so scared. I have a very good visual memory and I just, I, I just can't do it. But he loves these things. He's seen every horror movie out there. There is no horror movie where a quilt person, a quilt maker, oh, it could be called the quilt maker. Oh, no, I'm serious, I'm serious. It could be called the quilt maker. It's really scary, the quilt maker. And <laughs> Jill Alex, I rip him by the seams. But you, you know what, you, oh, well, maybe you're talking. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. This, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot here. The, the, um, the quilt maker, it's like the widow maker, you know? And, and the rotary cutter. The rotary cutter as a weapon is horrifying. If you don't know what a rotary cutter is, it's not, it's not, it's a, it's a razor blade on a wheel. I mean, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It's kind of fun to think about just because the gore factor would be terrible. I mean, you know, like, uh, uh, oh, oh, and then, then, then she could like stitch, you know, skin together or something like that. It's scary. It's scary. It really is scary. Ginger, yes, Ginger shears. Oh yeah, like we have really sharp scissors. What do we have that's really, like, like to be used, yeah, yeah, ginger shears, like really, really sharp shears. Obviously the rotary cutter. Um, Psycho killer. Yes, yes, it's scary. It's scary. A zombie movie. So what if it's a zombie movie where crazy quilt people continue to make more quilters? <gasps> Ew, that's, that's, that's quilt maker too. It could also be dre the dressmaker, but no, it's gotta be quilt maker. Um, <laughs> Kitty, I'm so glad you subscribed to Quilt Bulk. That's awesome. It's worth it. Everyone who is a subscriber will tell you it is totally worth it. I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that it'll be in your life. Um, anyway, so, oh, hot irons. Hot irons. That's really good, too. Um, quilt tops by Ivana as an embalmer. Mom, I don't know if you know, Ivana is a funeral, um, well, as an embalmer, but she, uh, what did you, uh, not a scientist, Ivana, you said something very specific that you, um, mortuary science or something like that, I think you said. But it's, it's the kind of thing my mom would just think is like super cool, because it is cool. Hey, Raffle, how's it going? Um, and and if there's a horror movie about quilt maker, you should, uh, Ivana, you should um, advise uh, and tell us just a little, I don't know, there's, there's a role for you here. Okay, there's a role for you. In the, but okay, so you've got rotary cutter, hot iron, seam ripper. Uh, I mean, like a seam ripper scene where, where the quilt maker was like, nye, 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 like in the face or something. It's horrible because it's a little thing, but it's really sharp. Um, exacto knives. I mean, we oh, needles, needles, pins, pins. Someone out there, do it, you know? We have ideas on the show all the time, and ideas, they're a dime a dozen, except here, they're like, a dollar a dozen, I don't know. I don't know enough about that uh, saying to to really change it, to make uh, it make more sense for us. But, you know, 
it's it, the idea is for you. It's free. You're free. Someone do it. Someone, some script writer. You maybe you're watching now. Maybe you're watching later. Maybe you're not a script writer. You've always wanted to write a script. I'm telling you, it is it going to write itself. The quilt maker, you know, the quilt maker one, the quilt maker two, rotary cutters, hot irons, pins, seam rippers, sewing skin. <laughs> okay, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Let's write it. Um, except. Oh yes, Kitty Hannah, we're gonna, okay, what's going on? You, something popped up. Something popped up. Why did it pop up? Okay, Kitty Hannah, you, your name popped up large in my my stream chat. I have no idea why. Anyway, so, okay, enough of that. So, so I'm looking at Death Quilt, okay? And I wanted to uh, learn more about it. <laughs> um, oh, it's so good. A nun maker says the last snide remark about her quilts drove her over the edge. It's true. The quilt maker, not your grandmother. Oh, that's good word and bird nerd. Quilt maker, and she's not your grandmother or something like that exactly. And the backstory says so in Karen is that you're get, is she's getting revenge when a quilt recipient didn't use the gifted quilt. Oh my God, that's hysterical. Oh my God, that's right. Someone makes this quilt. She makes it out of love and she gives it to someone and they never use it. No, they cut it up to make a jacket. Oh, oh, no, that's it, that's it, that's it. We're not gonna talk about the thing, we're not talking about the video, but, but, this is great. What am I doing? What am I doing this show? I gotta go, I gotta go write a script. But um, she comes back from the grave <laughs> to take revenge on some, oh yeah, no, it's really good. Some fashion designer who's like, you know, made millions of dollars, right? Millions of dollars, like, you know, making these cool clothes and, 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 you know, it's just this wholesale destruction, you know, and she's like really upset. And so she rises from the grave and she's like, no. And she takes her revenge. I think it's pretty good. Hellraiser, he had pins all over his head. Exactly, Molly. All right. All right, no, 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 we have to change the tone because I have to, as the host, I have to try to keep the show moving, even though I just want to do a little group, like a writer's workshop about this and get it going. Um, we have a book to write first. We have a book to write first. So, so I'm looking online for more about the quilt we play, the death quilt. And I did the thing that, <laughs> Padma, I did the thing um, that you do, which is, you know, I Googled death quilt and the author's name and really tried to find some more about it. Now, come to think of it, I did do a YouTube search, but I'm not entirely sure that I really exhausted that. I, I might have, I might have found something anyway, but I didn't find much. But what I did find is this next thing. And, and, and this is a shift in tone because it's quite somber, this, this particular thing. Um, I, I never would have found it if I wasn't, well, I might have found it eventually. Um, but, uh, but I found it because I was looking at this thing, and that's, that's, it's a classic example, it's a perfect example of A, why the show will never be over, <laughs> uh, not this episode specifically, but this show is, you know, there's so much material out there because, because quilts are everywhere, and so when I'm looking for this thing about a play, I end up finding this thing about this art project that this man has been working on for 20 years. Or something we're gonna we're gonna learn we're gonna learn okay yeah so this this is the thing okay so I was searching for death quilt okay and that's why I say it's you know it's a somber it's a somber thing and I mean this is a community I mean, it's not a community quilt project it's a uh, e eat your coat yeah Elaine Elaine um, we were we were talking um, <laughs> about horror stories well we were talking about horror stories but really we were talking about writing uh, horror movie script with quilts at the center. Um, it's pretty good. It, you'll have to go back and watch. Um, Yvonne, I'm going to mention that other thing about the YouTube replays. I won't forget. It's very important. But that's later. Right now, um, this quilt was made by um, Sydney. Sydney Brody. Sydney Brody. Uh, and I am going to read an article, read, read to you uh, about this quilt from this man's website. Um, this quilt is called um, The Durham Homicide and Victims of Violent Death Memorial Quilt. 
the Durham Homicide and Victims of Violent Death Memorial Quilt. So you can see how Death Quilt right led me to this. This is pretty. I've never seen. I've never seen a, a memorial quilt quite like this one. And and I've also never seen a memorial quilt, you know, that is structured like this. I think this is is really interesting the way it goes up like that. I I, I just I just think it's it's very cool. Um. So Durham Homicide and Victims of Violent Death Memorial Quilt um, uh, uh, was started to bring awareness to a rise in gun violence in Durham, North Carolina. It was created in protest after two-year-old Shaquana Atwater um, was shot and killed in 1994 while playing outside in a public housing community. Um, the quilt was, hold on, hold on. Sydney Brody created the quilt while employed as a 911 communications official at Durham Emergency Communication Center. Um, and this is a question and answer thing from this website. And so I was kind of skipping the cue and just reading the information. But in fact, I think, I think I'll, I'll read uh, a cue read the cues. Um, how does the quilt maker slash artist know when someone has been murdered? A small group of volunteers help monitor the news on TV and social media. The artist may also get a call directly from a concerned citizen, family member, or friend of a murder victim notifying him of their passing. Who sews on the squares? a picture let me show you a picture of mr mr brody and i'll read you his bio too um i'll read you his bio too um actually why don't i do that right now and then we'll go back to pictures of the quill so this is the man who started this um sydney brody is a native and lifelong resident of durham north carolina yvonne i think so i think so we got to go back and, and look i think you're right um a native and lifelong resident of Durham, North Carolina, um, activism, arts, and outreach has been a constant uh, for this arts and entertainment entrepreneur. Artist, musician, and prolific writer, Mr. Brody continues to create through many modes of expression on matters of the human condition. While working as a 9-11 communication, 911 communications officer in the 1990s, the shooting death of a small child inspired him to create the Durham Homicide Memorial Quilt, along with other thought-provoking works of art. In spring of 2017, Mr. Brody began bringing the 20-year-old quilt. So he started this thing 20 years ago, like patch by patch. It had grown to over 60 feet in length. Uh, he began bringing the quilt to vigils and other such events in and around Durham in an effort to give the people of Durham a sense of what nearly 800 murders over a 20 year period looks like on this earthly plane. Uh, yes, I can, hang on. Yeah, I can get rid of Estelle. I can get rid of Estelle. Can I get rid of Estelle? Um, hang on. Um, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can, I can. I, I'll do it as soon as I'm done with this. We'll take a quick break and I'll do that and uh, yeah. <laughs> Estelle, it's over. It's over. We have mods now. We don't need you. Okay. So, sorry, sorry. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, his prayer, uh, Sidney Brody's prayer, is to ultimately retire the quilt to a specialized museum center for social change. But until that day, the quilt will continue to serve as a conversation starter on the subject of violence and its root causes. On the subject of rampant homicides, at the very least, this effort strives to bring about a decline in the frequency of these occurrences. Okay, so a little bit more. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is I just go into my, I just go into my Twitch thing and untick her as a moderator, which I will, is easy. But if I do it, I mean, I'll do it, I'll do it. So you have to deal with Estelle for like 10 minutes and then she's gone, she's out. So back to this, uh, this question here, I mean, this sort of question and answer. Um, are all the murder victims on the quilt black? 
No, the Durham Homicide Memorial Quilt is an accounting of every murder victim in Durham County since 1994 with no regard to race. However, the majority of the victims on the quilt are disproportionately African-American males. Where is, okay, I love you too, mom. I love you. <laughs> Sewing report, no, Estelle is not a real person. She is our, she is our bot. She is the, the mod when, if no mods are able to be around, it's Estelle Witherspoon and she is brutal. Where is the quilt displayed daily for public viewing? When not publicly displayed, the quilt is kept in a black box vault away from direct sunlight. It can only be seen at scheduled public events. <laughs> yes, Myra, she will be. She will be disconnected like Hal. It's true. Who funds the work? Mr. Brody gathers materials and art supplies from many sources using his own resources. Uh, other philanthropists donate items such as security stanchions and red carpet adornments for the quilt's runway. Mr. Brody also designs keepsake and related memorabilia products to support the effort. Private donors also contribute through Cash App. And all of this information is on his website and his Cash App is the art of peace. So if you want to donate to the project and learn more about him, and there's a fundraiser tab on, on his website, you can give money. Um, and then, so then, so then there's one other thing just to tell you. So I was looking, so I, I Googled him. Yeah, yeah, I hate, look at how big, I mean, and it keeps growing, right? Um, it's interesting too, because it's local. I mean, it's, it's, it's local. I mean, so many of these um, uh, memorial quilts and these, yeah, the memorial quilts community, they're community-based where there, lots of people are making them. And so many of them are um, national projects, you know? It seems the the red the quilt the victims of sexual abuse or the survivors of sexual abuse and, and trauma and things you know that's very national. We'll t the red ribbon quilt is that what? It, no, no, not red ribbon. Anyway, we'll talk about the monument quilt. I think uh, AIDS quilt, of course, but this is specific to to Durham, right? I don't think it's North Carolina. I think it's Durham. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he does these events in and around Durham to give the people of Durham a sense of what nearly 800 murders over a 20-year period looks like. I mean, that's unreal indeed, Kelly. So I looked, I, I Googled this and, and uh, clicked the news tab because I wanted to know, like, where is this quilt now? Like, what's it, where, where has it been? Where is it showing? Um, and this was from uh, September of 2021. Community, met, uh, from the, the Durham... Well, Spectrum Local News from Charlotte, from Charlotte, a paper out of Charlotte. Community members are calling on Durham, Durham's leaders to address the recent spike in crime. So not getting better. Uh, Sidney Brody, uh, a Durham native, is very familiar with the problem because he spent more than 20 years working on a project to raise awareness about it. Uh, Brody is a self-described artist and community activist. Um, he's been working on his longest running project for 25 years. And it now has a 903. Uh, it's memorializing 903 homicide victims who have been killed in Durham since 1994. Brody said, I can't believe I'm still doing it or that it's still necessary to do it. So you can't help but wonder sometimes, is it futile? It was a quote. Most of the squares feature someone's name and the day they were killed in Durham. Quote, I will put a flower there just to show that this is an actual victim. We just don't have a name yet. Unquote. On Wednesday, he was adding the black border to the bottom of the almost 80 foot long quilt. Um, Brody said, quote, you'd like to think this is a permanent border, but the world we live in, it's a temporary one, unquote. All too often, he finds himself removing a border and adding more squares. He said, quote, leaving it open to me is like we're giving in. Closing it, oh, closing it, I think it gives hope. It gives hope. It leaves room for hope, Brody said. So he, Wow, he puts the border on every single time he puts a new block in. Wow, that is very powerful because he wants to, he has hope it'll be the last one. That's very powerful, that's amazing, that's amazing. Brody knows he can't keep doing this forever and that a quilt won't stop homicides from happening, but maybe it can change what people think of when they think of Durham's future. 
that's a city. He says, quote, I don't want this to define our city because there are a lot of great things going on in Durham. But on the other hand, it's because of the great things that I feel like it's worth the fight. <laughs> it's easy to place blame, but we all have a hand in making things better here. It's going to take unity. It's going to take all of us working together, unquote. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing. I mean, that border thing. <laughs> OK. It's just, it's, I mean, it's like a, a, the quilt blocks, you know, just when you sort of think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Ivana was asking, look at this, look at this. It, it does seem these are sh cuffs, shirt cuffs. That's totally, or uh, yeah, yeah, cuffs of shirts, right? 1,000%, that's what they are. Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, thank you, Susan. Um, just like you, you think you've seen all the settings or all the different ways that you can set, you know, a log cabin quilt block or something. And then you're like, oh, wow, never thought of that. And then there's, you know, a memorial quilt and this concept of insisting on putting the border on it every time as an act of hope is just, it's, an, it's, it's genius. It's a genius thing. It's very beautiful. So, yeah. So that is the Durham Homicide and Victims of Violent Death Memorial Quilt by Sidney Brody. Thought that was pretty, pretty good thing to share. Um, Joyce Fiber says, I was an AIDS quilt workshop leader in the 80s. Really? How many times we thought we were done and yet, wow, yeah, God bless you. You know, That is just, I mean, when I did the AIDS quilt lecture a few years ago at QuiltCon, I mean, it was probably, I mean, the, the coolest thing was when people talked to me afterward who were there, you know, uh, there was a nurse, um, a couple nurses, and, and, and I think there was somebody else who worked on the quilt, you know, in a, in a, in a, one of the, you know, a, a, one of the places where, you know, yeah, the workshops. <laughs> the workshops or the sewing places, you know, the offices where they would set up to sew and everything. That was really amazing. Um, and I said at the beginning of the lecture that, you know, I wasn't there and I'm going to do my best to tell the history, but um, learning from people who were there is just incredible. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, let's take a really quick break, really quick, just because I want to tell, I want to put Estelle in timeout. It's time. It's time for Estelle to go in timeout. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Be right back. You do not want to miss the second half of the show. It's, it's, it's real good. It's going to be real, real good. So, um, yeah. So I'll see you in like five minutes tops. Tops. Okay. Just a second.
We're back. Could you tell I was so nervous at the top of the show? I was. I really was. That was weird. I got over it, though. I was a wreck today. I mean, like, before the show. I was like, <laughs> but it's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, it was weird. As soon as you talk about it, you deflate it, you know? But, oh, man, I was nervous. Eesh. It'll be okay. It'll happen again. It'll happen again. It's fine. It's fine. But, uh... I think it's just calling it out, you know? Trying to keep a stiff upper, upper lip, it's never worked for me. So if I just talk about it, then it's usually okay. Ugh. Okay, so um, this, is the, this is the best part of the show now. Uh, word and bird nerd. Hey, word and bird nerd. I missed the first hour of the stream and was trying not to envision what might be happening in the chat. Phew, looks good. It's totally cool. It's really, it's really cool. But you know what? I mean, I... Yeah, I was nervous for a reason, you know? But so far, things are good. Oh, and Estelle, she's out of our lives. She's not gonna come back unless I click, like she doesn't exist, you know? Like she doesn't actually exist as a person. So her existence was as a moderator and I just unclicked her, I took her sword away, her moderator sword. So she she is a, she's kind of a non-entity right now. It's, where is she, where is she? Is Estelle Witherspoon. So you might miss her, you know? You might end up missing her. Interesting. I could actually give Eric like the login because she actually has a Twitch account. It's weird. But she like the, she could show up one day and really scare everybody by like actually saying something. Like actually as a person. Um <laughs> thanks, thanks. Woo. Thanks. You sent me a comic yesterday. Dee Dee Brew Crew sent me a comic. Oh yeah, I was I was checking, uh, I was checking email infrequently the past few days because I'm afraid of it. <laughs> I mean, so I, I need to check the Twitch email. I've been a little worried. Anyway, anyway, uh, I will look for my comic. Uh, so, oh yeah, type in all caps. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I clicked, I unclicked her name. No, that's not cool. That's not cool. Wait a minute. You know what? You know what? That's not, that's not okay. That's not okay. You're just going to have to, you're going to have to, I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't like to look away, you know, from the screen. I don't like dead air, but the truth is we have to deal with this. <laughs> we do. We have to deal with it. So I am going to go over here to my little thing, my little dashboard, and I can tell you my favorite joke while I do it. Roles manager, easy, this is easy. This is easy. Moderator. Hey, Eric. This is the way to do it. Um, I, I named my, my mod, my like Streamlabs bot mod, mm -hmm. Estelle Witherspoon, mm -hmm. and she is the worst. Yeah. Can you go into my Twitch and try to disable her? I went to my, uh, you, and you can say yes, and then if you can't do it, you can not. Can try. He can try. Thank you. And yeah. it's all in the password protector thing. Okay. How to get in. Oh, yeah. He's going to work on it. I really, I, I did the thing. I thought I did the thing. Um, because she's terrible. We hate her. <laughs> okay. So now now Eric's on it. God bless him. She's, she's worse than ever. Now she's worse than ever. I, I don't like this. Estelle has now... I want to cut you off, girl. Wait. Oh, I can ban her! Oh my god, I'm gonna ban her! I banned her! I did it! I did it! I banned her. <laughs> like, like, she's a troll. She is a troll. She's our first troll. She's banned. Honey, it's fine. Everything's... It's done. It is done. Estelle is banned. That's awesome. Okay. She's banned. Watch this, watch this. Estelle, you have been banned. So what now, huh? Look at that. All caps. All caps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. If the troll if the troll that we have in the chat is a bot, it's a pretty good situation to be in. Look at that. All chats are now in all caps forever. New rule, rule, <laughs> okay. All right, so so because things were, you know, sort of tense, and you know, I wonder, I don't know if Chris Mess is still in here. 
is, is Christmas, are you still in here? It's okay if you're not. <laughs> but, but you might not know that like, there's been this big kerfuffle, you know? And uh, that's why I was nervous. Cause you know, there's this kerfuffle, but that's, I know I'm not gonna talk about it. Okay. But no, no, I, the reason I said I was going to, the reason I said I, I, I even brought it up is because bec there has been this big kerfuffle out in the quilt sphere uh, and the garment sphere and the, I don't know, fashion sphere or whatever. Um, and it's been so kerfuffly that, you know, I got nervous. And part of the content has to do with that today because I was like, I really want to look at happy quilts because what if things are bananas in the chat? What if things get weird? So I, um, I picked a bunch of quilts that I really like. And so I'm going to show them to you and I'm going to read to you about them. And I had a lot of good scan time today. There's lots of scan, scan time today. Oh, I got to get small. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at these quilts. What is that? Oh, that's my chair. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's bad out there. Okay, so some of these quilts. So so the books that I'm I've got I've got a few books that I pulled quilts from. Um, the first one. Damn, I gotta get that link. I gotta get that affiliate link. Um, yeah, it'll just have to be next time. Okay, so so if you want to run and get this book now, go for it. Many of you will probably have this one, Hearts and Hands. Um, the influence of women and quilts on American society. Oh, uh, if you don't have it and you run and get it, um, I don't blame you. Uh, if you wait until I get my affiliate link <laughs> uh, for a books uh, for the next show, that's a promise. Um, then you can get it through my affiliate link. But this book, so, so there's a cover. This this has lost its dust jacket. Um, which I kind of don't mind because I love this embossed shiny thing. But this book is by Julie Silver um, and Elaine Hedges. Elaine, right? Elaine Hedges? Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, who's a brilliant quilt scholar. She's really good. Oh, I really want to meet her. I hope I can. Uh, and Pat Ferrero. So, well, Concept by Pat Ferrero. And Pat Ferrero, some of you will know, is the person who wrote, who made Quilts in Women's Lives, that film which I would love to watch together. I think Pat Ferrero is still around. I could ask her. Wouldn't that be great to watch it together? So email Pat Ferrero. Um, so concept by Pat Ferrero for this book, essay by Elaine Hedges, this wonderful scholar and Photographic and Quilt Research, Selection and Captions by Julie Silver and Pat Ferrero. Okay. So, and this book is one of the many that my mom, who's now gone, got me at that AQSG auction. Oh no, oh no. Look at this, Eleanor Malone passed away and she, she donated all her books to AQSG to auction off and my mom you know, did the auction and won her library. And so many of the books that I have, not all of them, but a good number of them are, are uh, Ms. Malone's books. And so I'm quite grateful. And look at this. Hang on. Well, sorry, sorry, hang on. I could have scanned this, but I didn't think about it. And look at this. So this is signed. It's signed by Julie Silver. And it says, for Eleanor, lucky friend with a first edition, Julie Silver. So now I have a, a first edition to someone else from Julie Silver. Pretty awesome. Julie Silver, by the way. God, if she ever starts watching this show, then I'll be really nervous. She's so awesome. Julie Silver is a quilt dealer and collector uh, in Berkeley. And she, she, is, she is like, there are goddesses, like quilt goddesses on like the Mount Olympus of like quilt scholarship and, and quilt awesomeness. And she's, she's on it. She's like the Athena on quilt, on Mount Quilt Awesome uh, uh, Olympus. Okay, so I, I went through this book and, and as, as I was looking at it, I realized, I think maybe this is like, if you could have like one, really one book about quilt history, it's probably this one. It's very good. It's the kind of book that, I mean, it's the kind of quilt book that you, you wanna read it. You should read it all the way through. 
and um, and I haven't read all of it all the way through. I mean, I dip in and out of these things, but it's time. It's time. Like this one, I'm gonna read like this week. You know, start to start to finish. Oh yeah, say the title again. It's Hearts and Hands, the influence of women and quilts. Sorry, right. the emboss is nice, but it's probably kind of hard to read. The influence of women and quilts on American society, but hearts and hands. And I'll just put, um, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Rafael. Awesome. So awesome. Look at you modding, modding away. I love this mod thing. I don't know. I hope you, I hope you guys do too, because it feels really good for all those reasons, you know. Um, okay, so um, this quilt is special because, and I put, oh, hearts and hands, page 32, album patch. So, so the reason this, this book is so great is it, it just really, I mean, the subtitle says it all, right? The influence of women in quilts on American society. So it's really the kind of thing that we're always talking about, you know, what, what do quilts mean and what do they say about us and the people. And, and, and I feel like this book really tells, does its best to tell the whole story of quilts in America, not just one kind of quilt in America. And, and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's very cool. Um, sorry, what did I say? Page 32. Okay. So it's not a, a wild quilt. I have a few really crazy wild quilts to show you, but this one is something, you know, we've seen this kind of thing before, but I wanted to talk about it because it's a friendship quilt. Friendship quilts, uh, fabric versions. This is from the book. This is the caption for this quilt. Okay. Friendship quilts, fabric versions of autograph albums, were made in great numbers between 1840 and the Civil War, a period of radical change and industrialization, when many families were leaving New England and heading westward. Some of these pioneers never saw friends or family again. We talked about that with the Texas, Texas show the other day, right? The, another book, the Texas Quilts, Texas Women, Texas Quilts book, that, that was one that like is good to read through, you know, it's really good. S Suzanne Yabsley. Um, the blocks on this quilt are signed by 16 friends and relatives. One of the central blocks is inscribed, Grandmother's Gift. Hey, bye, Stephanie Cake. Gotta bounce, <laughs> I love that. Gotta dip, gotta dip, gotta bounce. Um, I'm so glad you could make it to live. It's awesome that you came. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, and yeah, so I, I love this because there's some warning prints in here. Um, I think it's safe to say, I don't know, you know, all of my morning print history, but, but when you have these, these kinds of prints here, you know, the dark, you know, the dark morning prints, <laughs> we, we should talk about them. Um, morning as in I am in mourning prints. Um, morning prints were black, but also this deep turquoise, purple, lots of purple. These stripes appeared a lot of times in the fabrics that, that were considered morning prints. And indeed, women would buy these fabrics to make dresses for when they were in periods of mourning. But then they made their way into the quilts, of course, and it's just like totally fabulous. And, and Barbara Brackman, you know, has made the point several times that you know, you think about these women wearing these black dresses and you see these pictures, you know, of women in black dresses from, you know, 18, you know, whatever, 40 or something. And they look so, they look so dour and it's all black and white. And so you tend to think, I mean, I tend to think, it's, it's common to think that the whole world was sort of drab. But she's like, they looked like peacocks. They were, the colors were insane. You know, like, look at this crazy blue. It was really... It was really quite wild, you know, this, the colors were quite vibrant and, and, and we just don't see that because the pictures were in black and white. So I thought this was great because, you know, it's a friendship quilt. Somebody, somebody sent it to somebody on their way west. Whoops, oh, sorry. And grandmother's gift, you know, so grandma like spearheaded the project. And I love that. And it doesn't look like anything totally unique, but it's a very special quilt and it's very good. It's very good. Okay. Oh, this one, this one, this one's so good. This one's so good. Um, yeah, okay, wait, I wrote the page numbers up here, page 43. Okay. Mm, okay. 
this one looks pretty beat up, you know. But I'm glad we have it because it, it's a 25 patch. That's the name. That's what it's called. Ah, yes, this blue robin's nest. Yes, this like sort of denim, faded denim blue. It's so good. It's so good. I love it so much. 25 patch by Winnie Roop. So we know who made it. Uh, of Missouri. Winnie Roop of Missouri. Date unknown. Um, but we have some clues. Uh, 76 by 64. Pieced cottons and wools. And wools. Uh, collection of Dr. Henry Nock and Mrs. Cynthia Roop Nock. So it's still in the family, which is really interesting. It's so, so cool, Molly. Indeed it is. It's so, so cool. And you know what? I see a quilt like this and I'm like, it's just patches. It's, it's the simplest. I mean, maybe a strip quilt. I don't know. No, I think a strip quilt is harder than this. I mean, in terms of just like getting it to be a thing, because like if you're hand piecing, I mean, a strip quilt, I've never hand pieced a strip quilt. So maybe, I don't know, I shouldn't say, but a, a shorter seam is easier to sew than a long, long seam. And a strip quilt is all long seams. So like I think about making a quilt, you know, with a needle and thread, and maybe it was machine pieced. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. But this is like it's basic patchwork, and it's so effective. It's just so cool. It's just so cool. Chevron quilting. Oh, it is PJ. It's so Chevron quilting. Oh my god. Okay, okay, it's zigzag, actually. That's a really good question. So here, so I see what you're saying about the chevron. I see diagonal lines there going, you know, southwest. And then I see diagonal lines here. I feel like maybe it's zigzags down the top. I don't know. Okay, you all, you all look. Zoom in that much, and you, you see if you can find out. And I'll read you about this quilt. Winnie Morton was born a slave in the 1850s. When she was about seven years old, she stowed away with a plantation visitor who was returning home to Missouri. Winnie was delivered in Missouri to a friend of the visitor, Richard Roop, whose family protected Winnie from being returned to slavery. Winnie was raised along with the Roop children, and she took the family name. She was sent to school in a nearby town where, where it was hoped she would find black friends. But Winnie preferred the Roop farm and returned to stay as a beloved free house servant until her death in 1947. She read voraciously, had her own bank account, was a locally renowned cook, and made quilts. I know. Is that not the coolest story ever? Do you think that green olivey co olive color was something else gone fugitive? Yeah, I think maybe that's maybe it was black. Maybe it was a maybe it was all, you know, black and a color with the checkerboard, and maybe that faded. It seems like that's the case. I could be wrong. Well, no, I think that is, I mean, look at the purple. If you look at the purple 25 patch there, or no, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Um, this is the same thing up here. Well, I don't know. I don't know. By the way, this one, this one, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know, Kelly, I know. It's just the best. And you know what? This quilt sure doesn't look like much, does it? It's pretty damaged, isn't it? You know? It's pretty busted. Doesn't look like very valuable. But it really is. You know? <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty, pretty incredible, I thought. Um, and it's just a great quilt. It's so great. I know. The tiny blocks actually made an effective quilting guide. Oh my God, sewing report. That's a great point. It's really cool how the tiny blocks actually made an effective quilting guide. That's so true. I never really thought about that. Like let your patches, I mean, 
letting your patches or your patchwork be the guide for your quilting. Like, yes, that makes sense. You can echo quilt your patchwork. You can stitch in the ditch and stuff. But you make a really good point because, you know, just keep keep quilting through the center of those little blocks. Just keep hitting the center and you're going to be okay, you know? I mean, if you pieced well, that should be able to be, <laughs> to be, to be, you know, a guide. We'd be knowing exactly, Ivana. Thank you very much. Um... Yes, Susan, I really appreciate this quilt has been recorded for history. Same. And that's why this book rules. Okay. But, but wait, there's more. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, wait, let me give you the full view a little bit more before I go in here. And now, page 49. You guys don't even know what you're in for. I've got so many great quilts. And while I'm on with you, I just get to think about this and <laughs> not think about anything else. It's really great. Um, okay, so we could be here all night. Um, this is incredible, ridiculous. Oh, oh, just wait, oh, just you wait. You, just wait, you know what? During the break, I got a glass of wine and I, I burned it, so I'm gonna drink some. Mm. Oh God, that tastes good. Okay, listen to this. Now out of the family, this early quilt, pardon me, I'm so sorry. Let me give you the, 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 the specs. Unknown pattern, okay, that's what, it's, that's what it's called here. It doesn't have a name. Circa 1840 to 1860, okay? Southern United States, 93 by 78 inches applique cotton, collection of Irma Kosky. Okay. Now out of the family, this early quilt came orally documented as being made by, quote, housemaid and seamstress during slave days, unquote. Most slaves, after working all day, returned to their quarters at night to care for their own families. Quilts made by slave women for themselves were by necessity utilitarian and well used. It would be most unusual for a woman living under the well-documented oppressive conditions of slavery to have made a quilt like this one, with its abundant imported fabric and its meticulous and time-consuming work for her own use. More likely such a quilt in very fine condition after a century and a half was made for the slaveholders. I mean, it says made, it's documented as made by a housemaid and seamstress during slave days. I mean, whoa. I saw this quote and I was like, oh my God, that's so great. And then there's this, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. It, it's just fascinating. It's just fascinating. You know, if you're not a quilt nerd yet, like, what, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Because we, we get to learn history and think about America, uh, but we get to look at things like this while we do it. Yeah, yeah. So it's better. It's better over here. Um, it's perfection, Myra says. Yes, I can't imagine making something like this under those circumstances. Yeah, and then having to let it go to your master. It's too much. Agreed, it's too much. Uh, and it's like the, I mean, yeah. It's just, it's haunting because it's so delicate and like sweet, right? But think, think of it and the circumstances that it was created in. You know, I, I mean... I don't know about life. I don't understand anything. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Molly, yeah, exactly. It's disturbing, the size of these people. Um, okay, so that's that. And by the way, also quilt, you know, quilt maker nerd, two fabrics. But this fabric is that, I mean, they wouldn't have called it ombre, but it's that, roller print I don't know I'm not a fabric person but it's it's that um, 
don't know if it's a morning print either, but but it's it's yeah like a roller printed kind of fabric because it has that that color difference. It's so incredible. I mean, if you found a fabric that had that same kind of ombre thing, and of course there's a million kinds of ombre fabric, it's the same. It's this shape, all made of the same fabric, applique down. And I, I don't know. Is there a more beautiful quilt? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure that that there is. It's absolutely gorgeous. I wonder if uh, Kenny says. I wonder if that's by design or age. Um, you might be responding to someone, but oh, you mean like the color? Maybe the color. Oh, 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 the fabric. You know what, Kenny? I think it's actually the fabric. You know that has that difference in tone. I, I do think so. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I've seen fabric that has this quality to it. Um, like chintz, you know, has a particular look. And I feel like I've seen this kind. This kind of, uh, of fabric. I could be wrong. <laughs> if it did fade and it achieved this effect, tell me how it faded. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready for this? You're not. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. Okay. Page 67. I think you're getting why this book is the best. Okay, page 67. I can't believe this is real. I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. So this is a crazy quilt. Um, <laughs> this is a crazy quilt by a Sioux needlewoman in South Dakota, circa 1880 to 1900. It's 41 by 64 inches. Beaded suede with French. Collection of the Roger J. Bounds Foundation, Inc. Using traditional Sioux material, hide, okay, hides. Yes, okay, Kelly, I think it was a morning fabric. Yes, and I think, yes, I think that that, that is true. Using traditional Sioux material, hides, and the traditional size and shape of a pony blanket, this Indian needlewoman employed the new fashion of a crazy quilt incorporating trade beads. The result is a unique, skillful, and complex blending of Sioux and Victorian traditions. I mean, glad that we have this in a photograph you know because it's I, I, I mean I know that you've never seen anything like this because I have never seen anything like this um, people have asked me before yeah um, oh yeah kitty Hannah vintage you know well morning prints I wrote down morning prints um, we should totally talk about it it's fascinating a thousand percent and more on fabric. We can talk about, yeah, yeah fabric. We, we will talk about fabric. I could do a whole show on calico. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, I'm glad this, I'm glad this exists. I'm glad it's been kept safe. I'm glad that it's been photographed. I'm glad that it's been researched. Oh, yeah, and people have asked me, like, when I've talked about quilt history, I remember I was given some presentation in, grad school about American quilt history and and after I was done you know I was taking questions and people were like what about you know indigenous people you know you didn't say anything about them you know what about the, their quilts and and I, I mean I did say things about you know quilt making in America and and, and the the tradition of indigenous people you know but but they were saying you know how do you know that the the westerners you know that the the colonists eventually, whatever, were making the quilts and people weren't making them before. Um, and I said, because they didn't, <laughs> because as, and it was that wonderful thing we talked about in the Texas show, how as the settlers moved west, so did the quilts, you know, and the Native Americans who were living uh, in, on the land were learning how to quilt as the, the fabric and, the, and the, the women were teaching them, it came through, you know, and took over. So, um, so, you know, I, you see this, and, and when I first saw it, I was like, oh, my God, I've been wrong all these years. But it's even, but no, it's even better. This woman, this Sioux woman, was making 
Um, yeah, exactly. You need fabric to make quilts, precisely. And they, they, you know, they didn't have calicos, you know, in North Dakota, right? Uh, Native American people living in North Dakota, they didn't have calicos until they did. Um, so, and the idea that you would cut up a hide, you know, just just sew it back together again is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. Or or weaving, you know, a weaving a length of cloth, you wouldn't do it. But here, you know, it's eighteen. 80 to 1900 or something and so this woman is like in the fashion of the time is making a crazy quilt like everybody else but doing it in this way it's just so amazing i love it so much it's ridiculous the beads i know and their trade beads just just awesome just totally cool i love it so much i love it so much it's it's phenomenal i mean and and, and with the the pieces hanging off you know i want to touch it too with the pieces hanging off these it's 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 art and i'm not saying like this is so beautiful it's art this person was making art i you, you just cannot possibly argue with that can you i mean look at the texture of it and the fact that it was done at all it's completely impractical <laughs> although if it's a pony blanket you know anyway it's just pretty cool right really really cool i'm really glad this this is here yeah Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want to, I don't want to go too fast, uh, through these wonderful things, but, but that's it. Fringe, yeah, the fringe. Yeah, Victorian era, except in buckskin. What's that strange noise? Okay. Um, all right, we gotta move on, we gotta move on. Okay, 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 so now we're gonna switch, we're gonna switch over here. There's another, there's another book. But this quote, I mean, I, you know, it's not, it's not a, a Sue buckskin Victorian crazy quilt. You know, it's not quite as flashy as that. But I found this, so this is the book that I'm looking at now. In the Heart of Pennsylvania. 19th and 20th century quilt making traditions. Jeanette Lazansky. And you know, if my mom was here, dang it, mom, she gets tired. <laughs> Don't we all? But she, um, she, I think she knew Jeanette Liz Jeanette, right? Yeah, Lazansky. And she was, she published these wonderful books, this woman. She published really beautiful quilt books. We need to talk about her. I want to know about her. Um, the Lazansky books are really, really beautiful. Lazansky. Uh, and this quilt is in this this one, The Heart of Pennsylvania. I mean, the quality of the photographs, I mean, look, they're, they're just, they're beautiful. They're some of the most beautiful books that I have, probably, I feel like. And they're soft cover, but they're large. That's the only problem with them is they're large and they don't fit on the bookshelf very well. Um, so, so, but look, I mean, but look at this. Let me get out of the way. Look at the bottom. I mean, how it, how it, it breaks down in a way. Uh, it's so cool. I just think it's so cool. Um, so this is, it says the Hubler family. This is credited, this quilt to the Hubler family. East Buffalo. So in Pennsylvania, um, da, 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 it's 72 by 60, five to six stitches per inch is listed here. Okay, and it's, um, and it's solid and print fabrics with plain back. It doesn't say wool or cotton, I don't think. Oh, maybe it does, hang on. Okay, so one of many area comforts, comfortables or haps, which were pieced design of mixed fabric types that were filled with wool. Oh, one of many area comforts, comfortables or haps. So that's a word I've never heard. And this is this is listed as the Huber family hap, H-A-P. You know, have you have you heard of that? I've never heard of that, a hap. Um, one of many area comforts, comfortables or haps, were piece designs of mixed fabric types that were filled with wool. Okay, often they were quilted instead of knotted. By knotting or tying comforts, the owner was able to untie them. This is fascinating. Sorry, I have to start over. Often they were quilted instead of knotted. By knotting or tying comforts, the owner was able to untie them, remove the wool, and clean the top and back when necessary, then reassemble the layers for continued use. This derives from the Germanic tradition of cleaning feather ticks. Isn't that interesting? If you tied the, the cover, you could untie it, you know? Okay, Kenny.
Dialect, something such as a bed, quilt, or cloak that serves as a covering or wrap. Merriam-Webster. It's good. It's good. Thank you, Kenny. It's good. Mary hoards quilts and books about quilts. Yeah, it's so true. It's like, I mean, it, it, and yeah, I've got a lot. I've got a lot. It's really true. Um, and I'm going to have to start a whole new collection over in London. You know, I think we're going to be coming back home, like, you know, soon-ish. And not bouncing around as much. But that's it. That's it. I, that's it. Forget I said it. I'm not going to talk about it. But <clears throat> yeah. Um, so so this is a great hey, Fraz, Fraz Noel. Um, yeah, so the old time duvet duvet that takes forever to clean and put together, you can just take if you un, if you tie your quilt, you can untie it or you tie untie your hap, clean the that part, and then just put it back together. I thought that was very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Whoops. Okay, so this I gotta go a little bit faster because we've been on for two hours. I don't want to keep you people all night. Um, this is these are sewing uh, quilting templates from this book. These are metal quilt templates. I mean, they're beautiful. I mean, if I ever, listen, now that you've identified these things, there's two of them I have. Hey, now that you've got an eyeball on these things, like if you ever find, hey, M. Hicks, um, if, you, if you ever find, <laughs> good kidding, these things like in a, you know, flea market antique store or something, I mean, how cool is that? They are so beautiful. They would make a lovely decor piece, I believe. Look at that feather. Isn't it wonderful? So so there's there's information in this book about these about these things. Um, perforated patterns can be made practically. Oh wait, no, no, that's not it. Da, 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 da. Mm, no, they don't have anything about these specifically, but yeah. That's what they are. They're quilt templates. I know. I want them to. They're so great. This almost looks like a masquerade mask. But they're, I mean, they're just so cool. I mean, so how would they, I mean, how does it work? I mean, is it like a pounce kind of thing? Like, how do you put, how do you get your ink? Do you like put it in chalk, like sort of, you know, tamp it in chalk and then put it, put it down? I don't know, but I love it. The leaves are just ridiculous. So that's how they got their stitches so good. You know, they had these awesome templates. Okay, okay, so now we go to this last, this last book, okay, this last book. The, this book, this book, if you have one book, this is the book you should have. Just kidding. Well, no, it is really, but it's really good. I think Hearts and Hands is really good, but 20th Century Quilts, 1900 to 1950. Woodard and Greenstein. And you know, I've said their names many times, Woodard and Greenstein because they're pretty famous people. Um, let me tell you about them. Hang on. Thomas K. Woodard and Blanche Greenstein are the co-owners of Thomas K. Woodard, American Antiques and Quilts, one of the best known galleries in New York City, specializing in 19th and early 20th century quilts, folk art, and country furniture. By the way, this was written or published in, it's been a while, I'm not sure that Woodard and Greenstein, I don't know. I don't know. I really want to know about them. 1988. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I thought they were Mardi Gras masks too. You have some of their books. These, I mean, these people, their taste in quilts, I'm like, we could, we, we could hang because I love what they love pretty much across the board. As co-authors of Crib Quilts and Other Small Wonders, 1981, and the Poster Book of Quilts, 1984, Mr. Woodard and Ms. Greenstein have addressed audiences at numerous museums, quilt festivals, and educational institutions. They served as guest curators for the museum. Okay, they're really da 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 da. Mr. Woodard was raised in Des Moines, Iowa. Hmm, interesting, me too. Well, I mean, not, but in Iowa. And Ms. Green Greenstein was a former stylist for photographers. Uh, yeah, they're a leading source of quilt for quilt collectors in the United States, Canada, South America, Europe, Australia, and the Far East. So big time, big time. So they are still around. I should see the rugs. Oh my God. Okay. See, I got to make that documentary that I want to make. You know, I really want it to happen. I really wish my video was still viewable. You know, the copyright strike is such a drag because I really want people to watch it. I want, I want like a lot of people to watch it. And like, if it gets like a lot of people talking and stuff then like, you know, Maybe my agent will be like, hey, 
we got a nibble. You know, people are excited about this quilt thing and they want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? It'd be great if the video that I made that started this big conversation you could actually watch, but it's fine. Even if you can never watch it again, I think it did a pretty cool, a pretty good job. Okay, getting people talking. So, um, so anyway, uh, uh, yeah, I want. But the reason I want to do the documentary, I want to talk to Woodard and Greenst Greenstein. I always want to say Greenstein. I don't know why. So, because um, you know they've got to be getting up there. You know, the time is now. The time is now. Yeah, sewing report YouTube. I, like it was, it was. Yeah, I can't, I shouldn't talk about it. I shouldn't talk about it just because it's not resolved yet. And like, you know, lawyers or something like that. I don't know, but it's, the answer to your question is yes. It was, yes. Okay, so um, here, so this is just an amazing quilt. I've just never seen a quilt with this perspective. You know, this it's called Hollyhocks, page 44. Hollyhocks and Bluebirds. I mean, it's like, you know, so it says found in Missouri, cotton sateen, 88 by 78. Unlike most floral quilts that rely on repeated patterns, here is a single story. Here a single story is told, as if the designer somehow knew quilts would be enjoyed as wall hangings later in the 20th century. How cool is that? The blue grid creates the feeling of a paned window overlooking a garden. Uh, overlooking a garden where bluebirds circle sweetly in the morning sun. A more traditional bedspread arrangement of hollyhocks was offered by Stearns and Foster's pattern, number 49. Um, and yeah, that's so great, right? Make a quilt with birds. You know, Ivana, there's a, there's a, the bluebird is like, shows up a lot. You know, there's a, a, I think there's a famous pattern or just the bluebird of happiness. If you Google bluebird of happiness, you'll find like quilt, you'll find quilts with that vibe, that, that, uh, Bluebird vibe. Um, yeah, more quilts with birds. Molly squared. It seems very arts and crafts movement. I agree. I agree. But look at the way they're, the hollyhocks are growing through the frame. It's just amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. But they're all amazing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm skipping that one. I'm skipping that one. Sorry. That's Lazansky. Okay. I, I got to go on because, you know, we have to go on. But that other quilt was great. We'll look at it eventually. It might even be an intro quilt, come to think of it. Okay, um, but this one is from Lozanski and, and uh, it's out of order, but I put it in here because this woman made all of these quilts, all three of these quilts, and I think another another quilt of hers is on the facing page of, of this book. Uh, sorry that it's out of order, but I, I loved it because she had so much of that pink fabric <laughs> and so much of the other two. Um, and... Oh, wow. And and I just, it, it looks like this body of work. I don't know, somehow these quilts just are so calming to me to look at them. And I love the, I mean, this is what I mean by Lazansky being a great publisher. This is really cool, the way this is set up. Um, and, and in this book too, sometimes they'll show the, the back of the quilt, like the photograph has a piece of the quilt turned so you can see the back. Yeah, like this, you know. Um, so I, but I just love this mellow, the mellowness of these, this pink and, and the, the green and stuff. So I had to put that in there. Okay. 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 Back to work. Back to work. Umbrellas. Umbrellas. These are quilts that make me happy. That's it. That's it. Um, umbrella quilt top. Oh, so it's just a top. 1935. 70 by 70. Perhaps the maker of this quilt top was saving it for a rainy day. That's cute. Her umbrella appliques, ex executed in the popular red and green duo, were never backed or quilted. That's it. That's all we know. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's simple. It's simple. Boy, don't you suppose she got really tired of making those umbrellas? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I mean, that's six times six is 26. Oh, God. Yeah, I think so. I haven't done times tables in my head in a while. Um, the, these are great. They're just, they're just, oh, yeah, the Morton Salt umbrella. Totally, totally. 36. Thank you. Yeah, six times eight is 24. Um, that's a lot of umbrellas. And they're, it's all just two colors. But it's so effective. It's very pop art, too, you know? but before pop art was a thing. So I really liked it a lot. I think it's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, this one, this one, this one is great. Um, page 74. Eastern Star. Okay. I mean, this quilt is great because it's so, un I mean, I'm, you've just never seen it before, right? You've never seen the this, you know, sort of two-layered star. And the quilting is just magnificent, you know? Magnificent. Um, yeah, and, and you can see the quilting in this pretty well. I mean, the photo is pretty good. Eastern Star, 1935, 80 by 80. The medallion of the women's group, the Eastern Star, was a natural for quilters. The medallion of the women's group, the Eastern Star. Hmm, interesting. But this fine example, so this is another reason why I had to show you this. This fine example was pattern 152 offered by Home Art Studios of Des Moines, Iowa. Remember when we were talking about Mountain Mist and there were these different, like, you know, different pattern companies who were doing different, you know, things. There was like Stearns and Foster. Stearns and Foster did Mountain Mist, right? That was the parent company for that, I think. But but this, this Des Moines, Iowa, Home Art Studios, I remember reading about them. Well, this is a pattern that they offered. Um, this example is notable for its elaborate quilting. Hearts for loyalty. Oh, really? <gasps> okay, you see the hearts? Look up there, in here. Hearts for loyalty. Fill the background. And each large triangle of solid color is quilted with a cup, a sheaf of wheat, or other symbol. Five-pointed star. I love the multiple borders too. Oh yeah, okay, oh I see it. I see the shaft of wheat, like this orange, this like pumpkin, there's a shaft of wheat in the pumpkin, orange, and then, what is that, like a crown or something? I can't tell, you gotta get this book. It better be on your list. Put it on the list. And then buy it next time when I give you the affiliate link for eight books. Just put it on the list. Um, Masons, eh? Oh, the Eastern Star was like the Masons. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Eastern Star. I'm writing it down. I'm putting it on the list. That's what Eric and I say. Put it on the list. Um, very interesting. There is a list. You'll repost it to the Discord. Thank you, Rafa Waffle. You have, you have muttered well. Okay, this one. Just a few more. I think they've got like, what, like five more? Yeah, 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 maybe six. <laughs> okay, so this quilt, I love it. It's, it's it's very simple why I love it. I love it that it's black. I love it that this person used black fabric because she was probably, you know, a little bit out of out of the, the norm. She was probably trying to keep quilts weird. I think she was probably trying to do that. This one is Basket of Flowers circled circa 1930. 1930 when all of these quilts were like green and pink and you know all of that 1930s stuff but she was like no no my soul is 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 you know is is black as night and i'm going to you know express my my dourness i myself am strange and unusual right so she was a goth that's what i'm saying she was like a goth um new jersey 96 by 68, interesting size. Quite unconventionally, the maker of this quilt chose black as the background for her applique quilt. Yeah, wow. Her intention may have been to make a memorial quilt. That's true, but more probably she just liked the dramatic color combination. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know, memorial quilt with like yellow in it, I don't know. Um, although Midwestern Amish quilt makers of the same period often chose black for the background color, it's most unlikely this maker was influenced by the Amish where applique was frowned upon by the truly devout. Yeah, I mean, the Amish is, yeah, she wasn't, she wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing that. She might be a good contender for the quilt maker movie. Sewing report, I like how you're thinking. Okay. <laughs> we need that, ring, ring, ring. that, the psycho sound, that'd be good. Keep it weird, man. You gotta keep it weird. You gotta keep it weird. Um, she probably, yeah, Robin's Nest, you know. Robin says, you know, I wonder if she knew the colors would pop better. Totally. I mean, yellow and black. I was uh, in high school. We were the Huskies. And it was yellow and black were our colors. And, you know, the contrast is awesome, really. I wish I don't really like yellow that much. But, I mean, yellow and black, that's some pretty awesome contrast. Interesting. I haven't really thought about yellow and black much, you know, as a, as a combo. Okay. Okay. Um, this one, this one, 
is just great. Nineteen page eighty-five. I just like these houses. Um, honeymoon Cottage is what they call this, 1935. This pattern, which could be ordered by mail from Sears Roebuck, shows a popular and basic form of 20th century housing. A mail order pattern from Ruby Short McKim. Ruby McKim, interesting person. These quilted bungalows look unexpectedly modern. Large windows, a cozy fireplace, and a wide driveway. <laughs> the paint colors, peach, green, navy blue, were fashionable colors for clothing in the 30s. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, all right. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more because we have so many. And whoops, and I want to I want to end on a pictorial. I want to end on a pictorial. And and it's I don't want to keep. It. See the thing is like I, I, if I keep going, and people are like I gotta go, but I don't want to you know I gotta duck out. Then you know I don't want to keep anybody because. You're all pretty nice. And I know you're just going to do what you're going to do, but, you know, if I just keep going and going, it's like, God, Mary went really long tonight and I really have to go, but I didn't want to, you know, abandon, <laughs> abandon ship. So let's, we'll do one more and, and then we'll say goodnight. Um, I mean, it's 9.30. So, okay. So this one, I mean, you know, what's not to love? Look at this thing. 1935, applique. A petticoated girl in a swing. By the way, it's 38 by 60. So... I mean, that's pretty big. It's pretty big. I love this one too, New Elizabeth. It's really, it's it's Marvy. Yes, Susan Michael. You live in a kit house from the 20s, Ma? You do? That's so awesome. It's so awesome. Um, yeah, and, and I think, uh, well, like the Century of Progress um, contest, the amount of money that you could win was like $1,700, and you could complete, you could totally buy a house, a kit home from Sears, you know, with the money. It's crazy. Okay, a petticoated girl in a swing is depicted here with an, all the naivete of the folk art of a century ago. The tree from which she swings bursts with oversized apples and a comparatively tiny bird's nest. <laughs> um, a mother bird flies over the goat pasture, bringing a worm to her young. Wait, where? Oh, mother bird flies over the goat pasture. Oh yeah, oh up here. Oh, look at her. She's got, she's got a little worm in her mouth. That's so sweet. That is really, really sweet. Um, he used to be Mac. Um, so, so yeah. So this is great. The dogs look like, uh, or the dogs, the go the goats, the goats look like lambs to me. Little lambs. Oh, look at him. Look at the way he's standing. This little guy. He's like wants to play. Um, I love this quilt, of course. And what's I mean, it's just wonderful. That green and white pinstripe or ticking or whatever it is is really great. Look at the geese. Oh my God. They're great. They're great. They're great. Um, so, I mean, I, it's, it's, I'm full of pep because, you know, the show, the show has been great and I didn't know what to expect. Um, and who knows, who knows what to expect, but, um, Thank you all for being here and the mo my mods. Thank you so much. And if you had your thumbs up to be a mod, there's just like two of you. For some reason, I couldn't click the thing on your name, but we'll figure it out. Um, and I think, oh yeah, and the last thing is, the last thing is that um, there's going to be a change to the replay, the replay thing. And, um, you know, the video on demand on the Twitch channel I'll say this again on Thursday at the top of the show for people who are gone. But but there's going to be a change to watching the replays. Uh, they're going to be on YouTube, but but they'll be they'll come like a week or so later, like after the show, because I really want to. And this was a suggestion by a viewer. It was so valuable, so good. Um, that you know, subscribers like the show's on Twitch. You know, it's like on this network, and and to be part of it, you know, is like to be here live on you know during while it's happening and so then if so so to put the shows on youtube immediately after the show kind of takes some of that excitement away kind of takes some of the energy away actually and the subscriber i really value my subscribers so i want to make sure that that the subscription is really really worth something so i'm going to wait to post shows on youtube uh, i don't know how long but you know a week uh i think makes a lot of sense so that the subscribers who really support the show who are the stands um, 
feel that appreciation and are really part of something special. So I'm figuring out when I'm doing all, but that's, that's a change. Um, and the video on demand here on Twitch uh, will go to subscribers only, which has actually already happened. So, you know, some of these changes, if you're not a subscriber, it's like, man, that's such a bummer. And I completely understand if you're like, that sucks, Mary. Um, but as I was talking to some folks today, you know, the show, you know, it, it, it is changing the way it works. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. But I think it makes sense to do to do some things. So anyway, um, more on that later. And I'll it, it's we're getting there, you know, we're getting there. Um, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I will make more announcements at the top of the show next time about that, be clear about that. Um, so people can get the, get the scoop, get the information. Oh, and Quilter's Newsletter Friday is on, on Friday night and 1997 won in the poll. So 1997, we're going to look at an issue of Quilter's Newsletter from 1997. Okay. It has been great. It has been so good. It's been so good. Yeah. I graduated from, um, High school in 1997, so I'm very curious about it. Hey, okay, proud. I don't know if I said hi. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. I just, woof, yeah. And stay strong out there. Uh, and I'll see you all on di on the Discord tomorrow for sure. Okay, bye, everybody. Take care, and uh, and I'll see you. I'll see you soon.